Nuclear missile ready. Nuclear missile ready.
Nuclear missile ready.
Nuclear missile ready. Hello, everyone. I remember the first time I watched StarCraft 2 event. It was the Dreamhack Winter in 2014 at John Copping in Sweden. I was bored at home, I guess, and found the English stream of the event by chance. To be honest, I don't remember who was playing, I don't remember who won, I didn't even remember the location of the event I had to check on Liquipedia before this show. Nevertheless, I remember joining the stream and watching all afternoon long. I was bronze at that time and I probably didn't understand a lot of what was happening on the game. But the legendary hype that the commentators were bringing just hooked me. I don't even know who was casting, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them since it's because of those commentators if I'm here before you today, because since that day I didn't leave StarCraft. We should never forget how important casters are to an esports scene. Sure, it's good to have players, no players means no games, but what would be the game without the great commentators or scene have? Would really your community be that big and that committed to the game? Would StarCraft 2 still even exist as a competitive scene? We are in luck, in our favorite RTS, to have both really skilled players with 500 APMs and the most amazing casters that can make the most boring best of 7 PvP actually interesting to watch. But what's being a caster? How do you become one? What's the secret behind the skill of your commentators? This is what I wanted to explore in this first episode of the Alpha Car, sorry, the Alpha Car Talk Show. Hello everyone, welcome to the Alpaca Talk Show episode uh, 1. Uh, so it's not in editorial anymore, let's change the title, introduction. And we have two amazing casters with us today. Hello guys, how are you doing? Hello, <laughs> what's up? Um, thanks for, uh, thank you for inviting us, Miguel. Well, Very thanks. first episode, quite something. Yes, thanks for being my test subject for this first show. So let's introduce both of you. First, Kozan, your name is, tell me if I say it wrong, Simon Verhoeven. How do you tell, tell it? Um, yeah, Simon Verhoeven. It's it's pretty close, you know, for French <laughs> for French people, I would say that is the closest I've ever heard. So congratulations. Yeah, it's hard to, to say Dutch names, I think. Uh, so you're 28 years old, you're from Netherlands. And you have casted right. a lot uh, last year and this year, for example, community cast of WCS in the past, ETAX yeah. Pro Circuit, OSC Championship, and DreamHack uh, Winter uh, Stream uh, Community Stream. That's right. I've been I've been very fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When when I, I uh, had a couple of good gigs. When I watched your Liquid Media page, I was like, OMG, I didn't know you casted that much event. So this is just a little part of the event you casted. And Rushi, yep. your name is Corbett Butler. You're 31 years old, so you're basically a really old man. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. You are American. You have also made community cast of WCS in the past. You have casted in that I didn't know. I checked your liquid page, the uh, uh, Chinese team league, the gold team championship. And yeah, I, I helped out with that uh, kind of in a last ditch effort uh, uh, last year. So that was kind of a cool opportunity. You have casted Junior Championship, of course. We might talk a little bit about this. And uh, as well as Kozan, the DreamHack uh, streams. And of course, together, yeah. guys, you casted a big event in the A stream last year, the King of Battles. How was it? Ah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, just uh, being able to put together a premier level event with a community team was just a wild trip. And I think getting the opportunity to cast that with Kozan was uh, definitely in my top two or three experiences in StarCraft. A lot of fun. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, just overall, King of Battles, it was, it was just an entire different feeling in a sense, right? Being the A stream for a premier event overall. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty awesome that uh, the team Alpha X kind of uh, trusted us 
that type of responsibility and um yeah yeah it was it was a ton of fun it was a ton of fun indeed okay well you guys are caster so i'm going to give you a first challenge you will have 60 seconds not one second more to describe what is being a caster for you because i do you want to start to describe what it's like to be a caster for me in 60 um, seconds i mean just 60 seconds yeah did it already start yes I... <laughs> oh shit. okay well all right it's <laughs> it's quite something else for me it is just a different way of experiencing starcraft 2 overall when you're watching it overall it's it's a lot of fun but when you're observing you're casting you're you're having to pay a lot more attention to everything a lot more details pop out to you and i just i just find starcraft 2 a lot more enjoyable that way and um yeah overall just to be able to bring a bit more joy to that match to the series and uh really get people you know enthralled and invested into uh a show that's going on that is that is a lot of fun to do it takes a lot of creativity and um yeah that that is just a, a ton of joy to to you know mess around with and have fun with amazing and Rushi, you have your 60 seconds what is being a caster for you so for me, it's connecting the uh, excitement that's happening on the screen with the people that are watching at home. Because for most things like sports, esports, uh, anything in general, uh, most people watching what's happening have a good idea and understanding of what the game is and what the properties of like winning and losing are. But uh, connecting big moments with little moments and uh, different pieces of information that might not seem important to some but can connect to greater things down the road or can connect to an outcome that might have seemed a bit uh unexpected so uh as a commentator and a caster it's bringing those moments to light to help increase awareness of what's happening in the game and kozan did a great job with uh everything else bringing lots of joy and excitement to it as well okay i mean it may it make a lot of sense um Let's uh, know a bit better, a bit more about you because I asked you to prepare three to five affirmations about yourself, which can be either true or wrong. So you will reveal it and we will try to find with the chat maybe if they want to find if it's true or false. Cause and do you want to start with your first uh, your first uh, sentence? All right. So just to just to be sure, there was supposed to be two lies and three truths, right? Uh, it's as it can be as much lies and as much truth as you want. It can be five lies okay. or or five real things. Uh, if you I want. remember it correctly, I do believe that is that is the amount of lies I sprinkled in here. All right. So uh, the first one, uh, I started playing StarCraft One a lot with a friend in elementary school whose father was a Korean pilot that married a Dutch woman. Second one is well, it's such a uh, stuff. So, let's say let's say the first well, one first. You say StarCraft, but is it StarCraft one because you're too old? This was StarCraft one, yeah. Huh, Rashi, do you do you think it's true? School. Well, I mean that would line up timeline wise because if it was Brood War, I mean that would be uh, uh, mid two thousands. So, hmm, mm. I it's it's almost too specific not to be a lie, or it, it's too specific <laughs> not to be true. Yeah, I agree. So with I'm you. gonna say it's true. I guess uh, it's going to say true to Kazan. It, it is in fact a lie. Uh, I did have ah! a friend with a Korean father pilot who played a lot of StarCraft 1. Um, but yeah, he, he always very much respected that we had our own games going on. I think we were more into, uh, what was it? Uh, Red Alerts we were doing a lot of. And um, yeah, he was just feeding us into that strategy sphere instead. And uh, we, we never played uh, StarCraft 1 with him. So yeah. <laughs> but. I do, I do remember later on back in time, you know, it's it's kind of fun that already StarCraft 2 kind of got involved, even though, you know, not directly in that way. Okay. Well, Rashi, your turn now to give one of your affirmations and let's see if it's true or false. For now, we are all wrong. So let's maybe continue with it. We'll see. <laughs> well, see, now I'm nervous because uh, his was like super specific and i'm looking at mine going wait these are not as <laughs> um so my first one was uh i have a four-year college degree in music education yeah well you definitely have edu uh music education so it's probably true but is it four years kozan i think it's true you might be lying about the years or something like yeah. that the specifics but overall i yeah i would say it's true 
true. Yep, so it's absolutely nine. true. Got a, I got a four-year uh, Bachelor of Arts degree in music education. So Nice. Kozan, your turn again. What's your second sentence? Right. My second one, um, I used to work as a professional graphic designer for about a year. Oh, probably too. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that too, because you, I know you're drawing. You sent me some things we will show later on the, <laughs> on, on, later on the show, but I will be showing you some things on uh, the chat you will see. Uh, so yeah, it's true. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, it is true. Rashid. Dude, my dude has Photoshop, and uh, so many times when we were running the ESL cast, uh, he's making like these really quick uh, uh, switches and changes to our graphics. So yeah, like I believe that entirely. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, all right, uh, my second. I stand two point oh four meters tall. Two point oh four. It's on our in your Liquipedia page. That's so... a big boy. So that would be a big boy. You would be have to. You would have to be a really big boy, Roshi. How much is that in feet? <laughs> <laughs> Six feet eight inches. No, no, no. Well, I'm gonna say no, just just because that would make me feel very small. I'm gonna say no. I'm going to say yes because I remember seeing seeing something like this on your Liquipedia page. No, oh, shh. No. <laughs> it's true. Huh? true. It's true. <laughs> So I think I just I just ran the calculation again, and it's technically six or two point oh three. So I guess it's technically a lie, but uh, it was a lie right. of ignorance feet. rather than okay. omission. But yeah, I am six foot eight feet or six feet eight inches. There we go. <laughs> oh, inches! All right. OMG, we we'll use inches in two thousand twenty-one. Wow, ah, one of the greatest countries in the world. Okay, sure, okay. sure. We've done it. <laughs> Goes on. Um, all right, so before StarCraft 2 casting, I did a lot of Overwatch coaching, and uh, I even got paid to help write an Overwatch playbook, like a, a guide, basically. I never I feel like I know this. about it. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel think like Kozin would have told me something like that. Yeah, I don't think it's true either. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I believe that one. It's no. true. Is what? it? Yeah, it's true. Oh, you have to tell me more. <laughs> tell us more. Really? About it. Okay. Um, well, I, I used to I used to do a lot of um, just coaching overall from like bronze and uh, some top five hundreds, one or two players as well. Uh, no amazing stuff, but you know, honest work. And um, there's this other big commentator slash coach on the uh, the streamer platform. That's called Jane. Um, somehow we got into contact with one another and uh, yeah, you hooked me up with a gig to, uh, you know, something that you didn't have time for, uh, to write a, um, to write a play of manual, kind of like a hero guide to each hero in individual. And uh, yeah, me and some other guy from, um, I don't know where, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, me and some other guy, uh, we worked together to uh, try and write as much information there as possible. Well, some Australian uh, website or something that wanted to uh, start selling those guides, but yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was the first time I got paid for like doing something esports related, right? So, um, at that moment in time, you suddenly feel like, wait a moment, I can make money doing this sort of stuff. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's odd. But uh, yeah, it wasn't a, a lot, and uh, didn't do much else with it. But yeah, it's fun. Okay. Rashid, do you have uh, other sentences? I do. Um, I actually, I, I went the same route as uh, Kozan, so I think we both have five, which is good. Um, I can play five musical instruments. Five? It's a lot. I think, <laughs> I think you can do more, Rashi. I believe in you at this one. I mean, you spent four years. That would mean... You spent at least one year learning one instrument each. <laughs> so that would be four instruments already, right? That is how music school works. And I would say more. I would, I would say it's a lie. Really? I think it's, I I think it's true. Five is a lot already. Well, it feels it is a, lot a lot for me at least. No, I think Rushy, Rushy, if he wanted to, he could become one of those one man bands, right? With like a big <laughs> drum kit and like a tambourine <laughs> on the back and stomping around. I think he could do it. Yeah. So, Miguel, what do you think? I think it's true. 
It is false. Oh. I can play 13 instruments. What? Mm. No way! Even... Okay, make yep, the list so... now. It becomes easier, right? Once you've, like, searched, going from one instrument to another, right? It, you you've you kind of know more about the, um, just the musical notes and, and how it works, how progression works within music itself, so. Yeah. That, and... I guess it becomes... So, so I'll, I'll add a little clarifier to that where I can't play 13 instruments at the exact same level. Um, I've got about three that I would consider myself like a, a professional at, or it, if we'll use StarCraft terms, a grandmaster at. <laughs> um, but um, part of my music school training was to be able to play and therefore teach uh, all of the different instruments that are found in a typical wind band uh, in the United States. So um, if I went through all of them, Flute, oboe, bassoon, clarinet, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone, berry saxophone, trumpet, uh, French horn, trombone, euphonium, tuba, tuba is my main instrument, string bass, and percussion. 14, right? Impressive. Amazing. That's that's a lot. <laughs> it feels yeah. insane. <laughs> So uh, um, it wasn't specifically like one a year. Um, we actually had semester long courses <laughs> where it was divided. So I actually Wait, learned. It's not... it, doesn't it work like that? Is it really? I, I, I know. I four, four, 14, not quite the same. All this time. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, piano is in there. I'm terrible at piano. I don't even like claim to be able to play that. Um, but uh it's segmented off into uh, I took a semester long course for brass instruments, a semester long for woodwind and a semester long for percussion. So I had to learn about five or six at a time. OK, which is uh, which a lot of fun. And I play most of them on a weekly basis. I play right along with kids in lessons. Yeah, makes sense. Right. If you teach band in, in school and stuff as well, or just music lessons, uh, you would need mm -hmm. to know about a lot of instruments. Uh, does the sousaphone count as a tuba? Yes, they are the same. Uh, the sousaphone is just a marching version, a wraparound version of the tuba. Oh. Well, now we know. Because on your next uh, next sentence. Right, I have more questions or uh, things I want to either lie or not lie about. Um, all right, I had another Dutchman believe I was an American for about an entire year while we played games almost two to three times a week together. That's hilarious if it's true. I think I would believe that because you... I've, I've, I've had conversations with quite a few Dutch people and you don't have the stereotypical Dutch accent. Well, is it American? I mean, your English is pretty strong, and it's definitely not a British accent. So at that point, it's like, well, where else would it uh, come from? So no, all right, well, okay. I would believe that. Yeah. Okay, I think it's true. Yeah, it is true. Okay, right. oh, fair enough. Let's go. Let's Apparently go. Too easy. Win streak. We got. We got cool. one, Miguel. We got one. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, my fourth one. I can only speak English. Do you con French as a language you Ooh. can't speak? <laughs> I do not count the languages where I can type it into Google Translate languages I can speak. <laughs> so, um, the question is, does Rushi know Spanish or doesn't he know Spanish? I feel like that is... Hablas mm. Español? <laughs> Señor? <laughs> Senor, uh, do you think I speak Spanish? Um, I, I, I think you might dip and dabble a little bit. I don't think you're very good, maybe, but I think <laughs> dip and dabble. But I'm not sure if you would count that high enough as saying uh, you can have conversational. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's a lie because if you do only know one language, then I don't think you want to be bragging about that in a show like this. So I'm going to say it's a lie. I have no clue. I really have no clue. But yeah, if, if your Spanish is like your French, I will say you don't speak another language. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, puedo hablar en español, uh, pero uh, no, no puedo hablar uh, con... Uh, 
uh, con personas uh, porque uh, no tengo las palabras de español, pero um, puedo hablar. So I, I can speak uh, enough Spanish that I'll pass it off as a second language. So yes, I can speak English and enough Spanish to pass. Vale, muy bien. Suddenly saying he knows the language of music. <laughs> Oh, that's true. fair. That's fair. I do know the language of music. It's true. It's a universal. Hello, suddenly yellow. Everyone right. in the chat. Oh, it's great to have you all. And Kozan, this is your next one. Uh, last one, if I'm uh, not wrong. It's my final one. Um, oh. and this is a difficult one, I'd say. Um, all right. I'm working on uh, making a training facility for well, underground training facility for children uh, underage for StarCraft 2, uh, where they compete to see who can have dinner uh, and bedding that night, <laughs> uh, depending on their win rates on the ladder that day. And uh, yeah, to kind of secure the future of esports uh, in its whole uh, or as a whole. Yeah, Wait, Miguel, well, you didn't tell me that Kozan was working for the junior championships again. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, of course, it's true. Of course, it's true. <laughs> clearly, it's true. Yeah, no doubt um, I will lose. And Rishi, your final one. My final one. I have traveled to nine countries outside of the United States. So that's a nine place. countries. It's a lot. I think it's true. I think it's too much. Are we sell. Oh, maybe with your band, or. Hmm. Yeah, but I will I still say no. True. Yeah, no, I don't think so. It is true. Oh. I have been to exactly nine countries. I have traveled one? to Canada. I have traveled to uh, England, France, Switzerland, Austria, Liechtenstein, Italy, Germany, and Japan. And which one was the it's best? It's kind of sad that you've been to more European countries than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I nice. seven of those kind of all happen. I, I've been a part of a group that does a European tour every other summer. Uh, we take band and choir kids, and uh, the seven European countries I listed off are the order that we go in for that. Mm. So it's really cool. So I haven't spent a whole lot of time in those countries, but uh, enough to say I've been there. And which one was the best? And there was uh, only one correct answer. <laughs> well. You're not going to like the one that I would say is not the best. <laughs> uh, definitely Switzerland in my book. Um, we stay up in a ski village. Uh, it's uh, Kranz Montana in Switzerland, and it is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Okay, mm. amazing. Okay, well, that's Swiss it. keep putting those pictures up on the internet as well. Like, oh, this is Switzerland when we step out the bathroom, and then it's just a beautiful mountain landscape and it's true at doing. least for where we go it's like it it literally is like it's it's the place that you look at on the postcard yeah you go down it's like it's there it's outside yeah <laughs> thanks for the Although, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it also be kind of depressing in a way living in the most beautiful place in the world you know that no matter where you you go it's not going to get better than where you already are <laughs> uh, i think it's it's got to be one of those like you you have a different appreciation for the place that you live because um, I'm sure that the I'm sure that the people that live in Switzerland are like, oh, this is boring. The same old mountains every day. I <laughs> I want to go somewhere where it's all flat land. What I can oh, see forever. I'll just tiny hills covering the <laughs> landscape. You're telling me it's like a mountain, but smaller. I'm in. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that's it for the sentence, I think. Rushi has one more? No? Nope. No, I think it's nope. oh, okay. Amazing. Well, let's nice. now have a question drop. And Rushi, you know it because we did it once with the junior championship players. I give you two uh, possible answers and you have to pick one. Not two of them, not zero of them. You have to pick one of them. Okay. Okay. Let's start with our uh, Dutch player. So are you more a Korean or foreign your fan? Oh, foreigner. Are you Kozan, Rishi? Oh, you said Kozan. 
I said Dutch. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Dutch? I thought you were just going to ask about the Dutch player, and I thought, is he talking about me? Nah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably just my ego thinking someone's talking to me. Uh, no, um, I, it's hard to say. I, I I like the stories about the foreigners, but um, um, you know, it's just something magical. <laughs> I almost say mythical, mythological about the Korean scene. That ah, just fascinates me. Okay, makes sense. Um, well, what about you, Rashi? Foreigner, for sure. Why? I just enjoy... I've always been an underdog fan, and I think for the majority of the StarCraft II and StarCraft world, the foreigners have always been the underdogs. It's always great, exciting storylines, like Kozan just said. And I guess as a foreigner myself, I think uh, I, I resonate a lot with that the most, so I would definitely say foreigners. Makes sense. Uh, Kozan, do you prefer the old BlizzCon or now the new Katowice? Um, I think Katowice is, is nice to have a place for StarCraft 2 on its own, right? If, it, if it's bundled in with the rest of BlizzCon, um, I mean, it does make it a special event in a sense. You get to see a lot more people, maybe more crowd is gathered in. But, it, it, you know, I think both have their, their plus points and their minus points, if that's a fair answer. But I don't know. I, I, I think I would prefer Katowice just because I'm already in the StarCraft scene. I don't have to be lobs in anymore. Um, so for me, it's nice that there's something separate for StarCraft 2 uh, entirely, right? That is just set up for that, that purpose and completely constructed. It doesn't have to be... Uh, looking towards, all right, well, next day the stage has got to be used for this and that. It, it can just do StarCraft 2, and that's all it does. And it gets made specifically for that. And that is, you know, I think that's good. Yeah, makes total sense. What about you, Rashi? I'm, I'm kind of split. I mean, I, I think we haven't had an in-person event for the, the global final yet for Katowice. And I think that is going to change my answer maybe over time where if we can actually have our in-person event again and get the some proper hype and in-person excitement going for it but i'd have to just say blizzcon for now because there's always so much hype uh, surrounding that and of course it takes place in the united states so i'm i'm definitely biased <laughs> i see i see <laughs> okay again with you rushy uh do you prefer zune or ragnarok Ooh, Ragnarok. Because he's there. Oh, yeah. And what about you, Kozan? I think I think I like the story of Zun Zan Zun Zan Tutu Suzu better than, uh, <laughs> than Ragnarok overall. I like that he came back into the scene, that story overall, you know, and um, yeah, he's doing really well. I, I, I would go with Zan. Yeah, okay. Uh, now you have three choices. Uh, do you prefer Cyril, Renault, or Clem? Cousin. Cyril. The, o the OG man. The original. He started it all. The revolution. He's going to get back on top one day. It's going to happen. <laughs> Everybody's going to be left in the dust again. But yeah, the man, the man that started it all. For sure. Okay. Are you wrong too, Rashi? Uh, Rainer. Yeah, Rainer is everything Serral is gameplay wise with a ton of personality. So rip Clem. I'm with Clem, okay, because he's friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, do you prefer to support your fellow citizen or the Alpha X player, given that you're a uh, part of this team? What do you mean with fellow citizen? A Dutch for you and uh, Dutch? an American uh... for Rashi. Ah, I see, I see. Um, oh, that's rough. It would it would depend on who's playing, right? Because some of the Dutch players I've I've got to know, so that I would, you know, I, I have more personal contact with them now. So I, I would probably root for them in a way. Uh, and those Alpha X players, they win a ton already. They don't need more. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of in an easier category because uh, Alpha X has like two of the most prominent uh, North American, or I guess. I guess I can't say North American. It'd have to be uh, United States players uh, in Australia and future. So um, I would probably yield to Alpha X on that ground. Okay. Uh, and do you prefer to eat pizza or sushi? 
Pizza. Pizza. With pineapple? No. Yes. Sure. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> 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 okay, some specific question for Russia only now. Do you prefer France or Netherlands? Ooh. <sighs> I've One been correct to answer. France. I've never been to the Netherlands before. France is pretty. I, I'll go France. Okay. Uh, well, Cousin, France or USA? Well, I wanted to say one thing, but now... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, you know what? USA. Let's go with USA. Okay. Uh, well... Of course, it's wrong, but you can't be right every time. <laughs> Rashid, do you prefer tuba or string bass? Ooh, it's a good question. Tuba. Okay. Uh, Kozan, I know you play two races, so do you prefer Terran or Zerg? It, it truly depends. <laughs> like, it, it, I don't really prefer one. Um, it's just that I like the TFZ matchup, whether I play Zerg or Terran. Okay. Okay, makes sense. And uh, Rashi Terran OP or Protoss OP? Oh, Protoss OP. <laughs> yeah. And Kozan, are STEM or Rotterdam? Um, probably Rotterdam, because I, I met Harstam and I made it very awkward. Okay. Okay, well, that's the end of the <laughs> question. <laughs> That's the end of the question drop, guys. We're going to talk about um, about a new subject now, and I would like uh, to show you something. Oh well, oh no, I don't, I can't show you. But well, okay, no big deal. Let's talk a little bit about something really important, in my opinion, which is tournament formats, because you might have mm. seen the new um, GSL format, right? Mm -hmm. So what? Yep. Do you think about it, uh, Kozan and Rashi? Just the GSL format? Yes, yeah, a new GSL format. A new GSL format. So what you would mean a, a hypothetical situation if they just make something new? No, they. I mean the format, the format with Koday now. Um, too much. They got name. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, yeah, I think it's good. Right, just bring more StarCraft two into the Korean scene. Yeah, plus points for me. Uh, Koday. Uh, <laughs> I've always enjoyed Code A. I always thought it was a lot of fun just kind of seeing whether or not the, the players that you like to watch actually make it into Code S and you're cheering for them. Uh, I always think it's a good idea overall. I didn't really look too much into it, so I'm not sure like whether or not this is actually expanding on the opportunities that uh, Korean new players have. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, di I, I didn't do uh, too much research into that. So, uh, But yeah, if it's more StarCraft 2, that, that's good for me. So I will offer the context to that where I am not wild about the new GSL format uh, simply for the fact that it uh, condenses the Code S experience. So initially it used to be uh, 24 players that would qualify into Code S and now it's only 16 mm -hmm. with the round of 24 being that Code A. So it's it's kind of interesting in the sense that um, it, maybe it's a double-edged sword where the Code A experience is very exciting off of the, the bat because uh, of course you've got some really uh, high caliber players uh, playing before they even get a chance to get to Code S. So like Ty Prince was a good matchup. Mm -hmm. um, Parting in Dark is happening. So one of those players will not even qualify for Code S, which uh, I can't even tell you. It, well, probably the last time both of them weren't in was when Parting was serving his military uh, service. So. I mean, that's crazy to think about. Stats Bunny as well. So one of those two is not going to make it into Code S. I think it's it's creating some excitement out front, but I would love to have seen that continue on into at least like a round of 24. So a typical GSL season, even if they have to condense, condense it. Um, I, I know that's not also truly part of the format, but also the date changes is kind of difficult so they made two yeah. really big changes uh changing the format with code a and code s and then changing the date that it is uh broadcast on i know that's having a a hit right now on the numbers i hope those rebound as people kind of work their schedules around again but when you've done something for so many years and then just suddenly change it 
that's really hard on the especially the foreign scene okay. yeah. was there something in the korean scene something that was overlapping which made them change those dates do you know that or i'm not entirely sure of that i think uh my i think the I, I hate to even say it. it's not like rumor information i think just the talk amongst uh, people in the scene is that that gsl was holding a prime time slot uh on the korean uh like broadcast schedule and right. they were hoping to try and slide other things into there like i i know like artosis and tasteless have been casting valorant are they casting valorant in that set in that time slot now because i would see that being maybe a bit be. bigger cash cow going on yeah for africa yeah, that okay. makes sense and as casters because we're all commentators of course what kind of format tournament format do you like to cast which one don't you like to cast do, what does it change for you? Mm, well, I mean, round robins can sometimes get a little bit still if, if the conclusion's already kind of been made. Um, but, uh, I mean, I, I I think team leagues are always a lot of fun because then you get more variety within the matches. That is always uh, a lot of fun, in my opinion. And that way you also, um, yeah, you're cheering for a team. And so, so yeah, I, I think the team leagues are always uh, always my favorite overall. And do you prefer pro league format or all kill format? Um, I mean, the all kill format does have something. I mean, that is, <laughs> it, it adds a lot of excitement to me. Do you agree, Arashi? Yeah, I I definitely would. Like when I casted uh, BJ Destruction League last summer, uh, I thought the all kill format was a nice addition to that. Just because it does reward a player that has a hot hand and can yeah. just all of a sudden like, yeah, I'm just going to steamroll your team and have fun. And it does. It adds that extra level of excitement and a little bit of pressure on all of the players to not only make sure that they prepare for those matches, but also to try and have a couple of tricks in their back pocket and case they're in a situation where i mean if we don't win this game I mean, we're, we're just out entirely so um having something tricky to try and give them a little bit more life uh for me i would say maybe my least favorite format to try and cast in might be like a double elimination tournament in the sense that it, it's it's hard to bounce around and follow people and maybe that's uh less of a major issue from a like a viewer standpoint, because obviously if your favorite player loses one match, they're not completely out. They could make a comeback and, and get on the bottom side of the bracket. But I know as a caster, it can be tricky to follow those timelines. Uh, a lot of times where I've casted those as a, like a community event, maybe like an EPT cup, or I guess EPT is specifically um, single elimination, but um, various times I have community casted for double elimination brackets. You get caught either waiting a long time trying to find new players to cast, or what ends up happening is, is you just follow, like you cast a game and then you just follow that person and you follow and you follow. And it's great if like you grab someone like a Scarlet or a Neeb or a Future um, or an Estrella who's got a, or like M Canning uh, who has really great community following. But if it's somebody that hasn't really broadcast that they're playing or doesn't have a, a big community or stream following you just end up play, following the same matchup over and over and and maybe it's good maybe it's not um i kind of like the gsl style format just to, in terms of creating nice bite-sized productions to um to keep track of uh in the case of like the the junior championships where we have a day and here's our group we know exactly who's playing and in what order to some degree and uh we can create little um pockets of entertainment there i'd say that's probably where i'm most comfortable okay from a stream pers perspective, how much do you like to have, uh, um, how much games do you like to cast on one day? You know, do you have to have like 10 matches or what's the best uh, time for a group or for a cast? <clears throat> um, personally, I like, it, it depends on how much casting I've already done that week as well. Uh, sometimes I, I do I do feel like I get a little bit drained and don't get to really put everything in that I would like to. Um, but then, like, as long as it's a good event, right? If it's a good event and um, 
things run smoothly there's not a lot of hiccups continuously throughout the day you're with a, with somebody that is uh, co-commentating with you that you're having a good time with then I, I absolutely love those long days that is just fantastic uh but yeah if you have to do one of those days on your own that can become a bit a bit still can become a bit rough but uh yeah i mean if you're together with somebody else those those days you know buckling through together and just um yeah going through every game together just like like a little bit of a, a journey kind of like a a road trip through all sorts of starcraft 2 scenarios that you're having together and, and those days they uh, yeah they they really stick in your mind for for a long time in a sense right okay yeah that was kind of what i was going to lean on as well is it, it vastly differs if i'm by myself or if i'm with somebody else because there have been a lot of uh, times where i have um <laughs> I've had to do something all by myself and yeah, you just get tired and worn down. Trying to create dialogue nonstop is just, it's tiring. And having somebody even just to bounce ideas off of or that has a separate thought that's running. I, I like Kozan and I did this really well with King of Battles where we would obviously like have good conversations together, but there were a lot of times where we were thinking about different things and then that would generate more conversation because we'd talk about one thing. It's like, oh yeah, but have yeah. we have we thought about this thing? And then we have a completely new topic of conversation. It brings a lot more energy back. Um, it's obviously very nice to have uh, people to share like hype casting load with. Um, I would say it, you would ask like for a specific amount i'd say like my personal threshold is about four hours um if i'm solo casting i can probably double that if i am working with someone but we're one of the longest days that we had kozan between esl and uh, king of battle and i think we there was one day we pushed like nine or ten yeah i think so yeah there were some long days though but with a lot of down times as well right so you do have That's some true. breaks where you're running back and forth but like you're still usually busy with production things or trying to be ready because you're not quite sure when things are starting off again <laughs> and that type of thing but um yeah. yeah it yeah just just overall that's a lot of fun solo casting like i could i could do one of those big days uh on my own as well but it, yeah it would i would not be able to do them for an extended period of time right or like on a weekly basis or something like that yeah. i i would i would not be able to do anything like that yeah okay and what's the best amount of days for a uh, similar for the same tournament? You know, what, like one week tournament, or is it too much? Uh, for example, Katowice, do you think it's good uh, in terms of play days? What do you think about this? I like stretching it out over the course of time. I, I think that's okay. Um, the DreamHack formula, where you kind of uh, slam it all on a weekend, I think it has a lot of value as well, but you're getting a much different experience out of it. I think both from all sides, from like a player side, it's a little bit more chaotic, harder to prepare for. So there are definitely players that thrive in that weekend format. But then if you have your um, drawn out, like I'll call it GSL style, where um, you're, you're your play dates are planned and um, you know who you're going to go up against. Um, there's obviously a, like uh, the Korean scene, uh, Korean players drastically benefit from that because that's mostly what they've known for the entirety of StarCraft and StarCraft 2. So um, from a viewer and a caster standpoint, I, I think they're about the same, but I, I do like stretching it out, giving uh, more concentrated content over the course of like a week or two. Okay. Go that. Yeah, I think I think I agree with that. Especially now, just seeing the uh, the team league going on for however amount of weeks it will be, like ten, ten plus, I believe. So, um, you know, it, it just gives you something to follow over a longer period of time. At the same moment, it, we're already a little bit overcrowded in the StarCraft two scene, in a sense. So, having events like this run for such a long time. You know it can get difficult for uh, for other organizations such as Alpha X and such, but that I, I guess that is not really something to be concerned about that much as a viewer, uh, or at least well as long as you you keep getting those other events, of course. But um, yeah, so so I would say that there is definitely a good balance to be struck. I, I really like these events of like ten weeks plus. I, I that as a viewer, I would like to prefer that type of thing, right? I would like to watch that more so than something that is just a weekend long um but yeah yeah i think that's a good balance to be made right just just kind of switching it on and off again now and again 
Well, I think that's something that we've missed uh, just because of uh, coronavirus over the last year is the variety. Um, not having the weekend uh, DreamHack events to sprinkle in between the longer drawn out online events, I, I think has taken a little bit of energy out of the scene because when everything is exactly the same, it's all the exact same format. It, it loses a little bit of its, its excitement because then it's no longer like, oh, I'm, I'm watching it for this specific organization or I'm watching it for this specific uh, excitement. Uh, it's now come down to, well, I'll watch it if my favorite player is playing, but if they uh, lose out or they're not participating, well, maybe I can miss that event. So... I am hopeful, and, and I guess like we're going to cross our fingers here, but I'm hopeful that we're going to get back to in-person events sooner rather than later and add some of that variety back into the StarCraft II scene for sure. Yeah. yeah. Just makes it more memorable, right? Yeah, exactly. Just even being in person as well. Um, yeah. we've, we've missed a lot of that. Uh, you asked earlier, Miguel, about the... Uh, the difference between Katowice and BlizzCon. I mean, if you think about the in-person Katowice events, uh, I guess it would have been three years ago now because two years, no, two no. years ago. Yeah. Um, Actually, one year uh, ago. Uh, I think the beginning of the tournament was offline and then they, if I'm not wrong. Well, I don't think they had anybody in um, Katowice because they had closed it off. Um, that was like one of the first events that got shut down in the StarCraft scene. Maybe. So, um, so yeah, so I think it's been two years since they've had people there, but even just like having people in an arena uh, adds so much more excitement. I, I can remember very vividly going to Austin in 2018 and just having a vastly different experience because I was around people. And, and it seems like such a cliche, obvious thing to say, but I think it's good to remind ourselves of as we are like going into the second year of the ESL contract. Uh, there's obviously people concerned about what the future of StarCraft II holds beyond that. And if we can get some of that in-person excitement and energy brought back to our scene, I think that's going to help a lot. Did you go to offline event too, Kuzan? Well, I, I'm... Yeah, um, how did I put this? I've always been a person that likes to remain inside of his own home. I, I did go to some small uh, StarCraft 2 events, but then usually I would go with friends, and very often, just my real-life friends, never that much into StarCraft 2, but then I would force them to go along, <laughs> and I feel like that did lessen the experience, perhaps for me, a little bit now and again, um, because I would be sitting there watch, trying to watch the S StarCraft 2, and then my friends would be going like, so what was happening? Why, why? Is this exciting? I don't, I'm not quite sure. Um, so yeah, then, you know, it, it, I, I didn't do as much, but yeah, I, I only started really getting very involved in StarCraft 2, I believe like maybe half a year before Corona really took off, maybe a little bit less. I don't know exactly. But uh, yeah, when I really got invested into StarCraft 2, um, Suddenly, all the events stopped happening, so I, I couldn't. <laughs> I really want to. I really want to right now, uh, just kind of to meet people that you know I've I've talked to on the internet. These players that I've been talking to, some of the other casters, you know, uh, and just get to know people. That that seems like a, just, you know really want to start doing that as well. But um, yeah, just unfortunate timing. Okay. Okay, well, let's switch to our next subject then. Um, I would like to talk a little bit with you because you're not players, you're casters. So that means you have to know not three matchups like a Terran. A Terran needs to know TVT, TVZ and TVP, but you need to know six matchups. And I want to talk about this starting by showing you two uh, things. Well, you can see it on the stream, of course. First image I want to show you is the playoff of the King of Battles for Tehran in the semi-finals. Q, TY, Clan and Maru. And the second one is really similar, right? It is a playoff of another tournament, you casted Rashi, the Junior Championship Season yeah. 1 <laughs> of the year for Protosis in the playoff 3 match in PvP. So let's start with this. What do you uh, think about the mirror matchups? Uh, is there issues with it? Is it still fun to cast? 
I think mirror matchups have like they, they obviously have their place in StarCraft 2. From a caster perspective, the mirror matchup can be tricky if you're not confident with the, the typical makeup of that room. I know like for a while it took me um, some time to get really comfortable with like TVT because uh, Terran for me was always like, oh, I understand how it interacts with Zerg, being a Zerg player myself. And there was some basic idea of, okay, Terran players can go into bio, Terran players can go into mech. That's kind of the, the two diverging paths and then you can build from there. But the intricacies of specifically like Terran versus Terran and how different siege ups happen and how they handle uh, counterattacking and attacking in multiple locations can be tricky. And I would say that for like the StarCraft II elite, um, casting TVT is the biggest place where you can expose yourself to. Do you actually know the <laughs> matchup? Because everyone's going to have an opinion on it. And it's like, wait, that, that tank moved half an inch too far forward. Oh, it's complete chaos. And I and I could be sitting there going like, oh, yeah, I mean, this is a great engagement for him. And then the chat's just going crazy because <laughs> you, you don't have any idea. What is he talking about? And I know, like, for me, like, I felt that a lot with King of Battles, especially since it was all TVT all the way through to the very end. And when when you're casting people that are good at the game, but not like the top S tier players, like, okay, you could probably get away with it. You're not going to have the StarCraft faithful and elite watching. But like Byun, Maru, Innovation, I felt pressure. I felt a lot of pressure to make sure that I didn't overgeneralize. And I, I felt bad at the time because I felt like I was hanging Kozan out to dry a lot because I knew his Terran knowledge was a lot better than mine. So there would be a lot of times where I would like float him a question because I'm like, I want to make a generalization here, but I also don't want a Reddit thread dedicated to me either. Kozan, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a feeling for sure. Yeah. I mean, mirror matchups for me. For uh, I have the benefit of playing Terran and Zerg, right? So I, I kind of already knew a little bit more about those matchups. And um, you, you do mention, right, the, the pro players, they have to know the three matchups, but and we only need to know, well, we need to know all of them. But at the same time, the, the severe amount of knowledge that is available within these pro players is just vastly outnumbers anything I could say at any point in time about this game. Um, so, you know, uh, probably even still, they, they still have more knowledge on those departments. Uh, what makes it easier as a caster kind of is that you're not directly talking towards those players, right? You're playing, you're talking to players or uh, people that are around your level or below or maybe a little bit above yours. That happens as well, right? But uh, that's not the main audience overall. So, it, it, you know, it sometimes, um, especially in mirror matchups, I, man in in pvp it was it was i had no idea what was happening right sometimes you see oh, oh, oh it's a robo going down i know what's going on he's going to immortal push or something like that because that's happening in pvz and then you just make uh, assumptions like that doesn't quite work but um anyway <laughs> anyway mirror matchups i think they're pretty cool overall you don't want to have them too many times but um yeah. There's a lot of intricacies. The, the one downside is that it always lowers the viewership overall, right? Because there's mm. not two races involved. And because there's not two races involved, there's not two uh, groups of audience that you're directly um, kind of making interested. You're just influencing the Terrans, right? And even then, the Terrans are probably less interested in TVT rather than them, their race, beating another race, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the most popular matchup? Oh, Zerg versus Terran. I think that is like universally. I, I, I've i never met somebody that's been like, Zerg versus Terran. No, that's boring. Because I'm. <laughs> you're playing Terran and Zerg, uh, um, so. Yeah. I guess you will say TVZ2. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is just the matchup, in my opinion, where um, there's so much micro involved, there's so much positional play, there's continuous usually battles going on right with the terran trying to harass the zerg trying to still spread all the creep all this stuff a lot of opportunities be uh, kind of arise in that matchup because of this and terran um really the race that is most well equipped to try and get those 
you know, tiny advantage is that the Zerg is trying to get everywhere and try to check them with as, at least amount of units as possible. And I just, uh, you know, why it always feels like it's on a razor edge, in my opinion, and that's why it's just the most fun uh, matchup to watch. Okay, makes sense. Um, what do you think about the time of the games? You know, PvP can be really short sometime. Uh, and what's your favorite uh, game duration, you know, do you think like 15 minutes game is the best, 14 minute games, what do you prefer to to see? 420, no, um, <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> no, um, again, I think variety, right, variety is what you're looking for. Yeah, and I, I struggle with the super long games because I think you get past the 20 minute mark and it gets difficult to know what to say, especially if it's a long drawn out macro game and it's just all about like slight positioning as it, Oh, the, the armies are moving up to the North. Oh, the other army's moving up to the North too. They're going to hit Oh Nope. They're going to back off and rebuild. And it's, it feels like it's just that on repeat every minute and a half minute 45. And you're just patiently waiting for the one mistake like essentially at that point it's like you're waiting for one mistake to happen somebody uh isn't paying attention to their main army or they let uh, something go really fast suddenly it's now oh <laughs> get the cat um <laughs> suddenly now it's uh over and and you're then left with something new to talk about at least but uh it, it kind of all boils down to just one second so i know that the, the the shorter games are usually a little bit faster because or no let me rephrase that the shorter games are a little bit more interesting because something has come up where like oh okay they're gonna do a cannon rush now we can talk about positionings or oh i really love this seven minute timing and you can kind of walk through okay they're gonna get exactly this many drones and they're gonna pull at this time and now they're gonna grab all the scvs and push at this moment so uh, from a content and commentating perspective the shorter games tend to be a bit more interesting but of course who doesn't like the long drawn out game every now and again No. Oh, okay. I think I think the difficulty with the long games might be as well that like a long game with a lot of action that's no problem right that's that's really cool that those are some of the most famous and most remembered games overall but if you have situations where you, uh, what, what it was kind of getting at sometimes was that there were two parties and they kind of knew if I attack into him I'm gonna die if he attacks into me he's gonna die and um, <clears throat> yeah sometimes it feels like a right who is going to kind of commit into their opponent first and um yeah decide that they want to lose this match and that that is when it gets boring right that's when it gets still that that's what you want to avoid overall i would say in uh, like esports okay and if you were new david kim would did would you make one change that to one matchup specifically or is it something you think must be changed Tough question. Take out, um, take out mirror matchups. Take out Protoss and just make it PvP. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, full TVT. No, no, no. Full TVT. No, TVT. Yeah, just now. Um, I don't know. I think uh, it's really hard for me to say. Honestly, I, I think that's the shield battery overcharge is an ability that that kind of felt like a not a fun design, not not something that's interesting to me. I, I think I would like that to be looked at again. And kind of changed uh, i feel like that gave a lot of uh kind of possibilities for the protos to to help them out in a situation where they made mistakes they should get punished and then they just don't because of a very very strong defensive thing but yeah well and protoss um, has always felt like it's been searching for an answer to the early game defense that doesn't just completely uh tilt them into the powerful position in the late game i mean we've, we've seen yeah. we've seen pylon overcharge we've seen mothership core we've seen shield battery overcharge we've seen shield batteries being added into the game again and every time it, it always feels like a band-aid like, okay here's something to limp you along through the first five minutes But then we find out that, oh, okay, so Mothership Core, uh, you, you basically now get a free pass into a, a Mothership? 
in the late game okay that's not gonna work out um the pylon overcharge wait you can use that aggressively and just destroy your opponent because of it well that's not gonna work shield battery overcharge we have um with like uh void ray pushes yeah. where that is got some interesting dynamics to it and on top of uh really tipping the scale in specific engagements as well um with the units like the archon that are almost fully dependent on shields and now you've got a unit that has splash damage that's already strong to begin with and now it's almost impenetrable in certain engagements it, that just adds some interesting uh, situations to it so i don't know if protoss is ever going to be able to find that magical balance of um like like the Reaper, for example, in Terran. Like the Reaper is very, very good early game, and then it falls off and has no significant purpose uh, after that point. Um, I, I feel like the developers looked for so long with Protoss and never really found that answer. So, um, do I think it's a bit overbalanced? Uh, maybe. I, I'm not sure. I just don't know a better way to change it though. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's hard to talk about the balance to me as well. But like overall, I just I don't I don't find it an exciting mechanic in the game. I don't think it adds a whole bunch overall um, for me personally. I'm not like oh ho oh, oh, ho! I hope he goes to use that overcharge now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Uh, yeah, it's just it's just not. Yeah. Okay, well, it makes sense. Uh, a lot of people are talking at the moment about maybe new uh, new strategic games in the future. Uh, if there is a new strategy game, do you think three races is good? Or would you like to see maybe more, like four in Warcraft 3 or less? What's the best amount of races, basically, in your opinion? I think it kind of depends on how it's uh, utilized. Like, if you think about... Um... You think about like a starcraft and a warcraft every race is fundamentally different outside of okay you have a basic worker unit a basic melee unit or ground unit and um then it branches out from there but i think that like specifically you're talking about like like frost giant and sun spear um dream haven i probably the three that come to my top of my head um, it'd be interesting to see if they take a path much like uh, Age of Empires did, where they have civilizations rather than races. So everyone is fundamentally the same, but with like one or two special units that make them stand out. Um, I, I'll be interested to see what those three uh, companies that are coming out with brand new uh, IPs want to do if they want to go into unique races that everything is fundamentally different outside of some core mechanics or if they're going to stick with um something that is more universal because i think that would then uh flip the numbers for me if it's going to be more universal with a couple of unique characters or units uh per civilization i think the larger numbers are fine but so if you're going to go unique i think lower is better Rushy, so with with Age of Empires, I I don't follow the pro scene that much, but like, are those are all the civilizations then also being played, or is it just a select few, or is it really just three of them that are being played? I I think it it does kind of boil down like anything. Uh, there are like the the really good civilizations that uh, have specific advantages. Um, something that I've noticed as well, and and far be it for me to call myself an expert of the Age of Empires scene. I've seen a few scenarios, and I have. Uh, a friend who's really into that but i think a lot of it is map oriented as well where um like age of empires utilizes like a water mechanic um for like ships and stuff kind of in the same way that warcraft 3 does and there are obviously civilizations that benefit more because they are specialized as a as like a, a water specialty civilization I'm, I'm really generalizing that term uh don't come after me if you're an mm -hmm. age of empires fan whereas with starcraft 2 um they're really every race has air units every race has ground units and there's no um well not anymore at least um i think once they removed the island mechanic from the map pool um there is no benefit to like oh well terran can lift their bases and fly them over and on an island map oh that is like a drastically in the Terran's favor because they can just do that so easily Protoss and, and Zerg don't have as many options so um, I think I think that is probably it so that is where uh, the map making community can come in as well and uh, offer some good variation and I think right now that's happening in the StarCraft world, uh, Creighton Olsen's host, hosting that Mapper's Delight 
um, yep. where they are starting to come up with really creative uh, map tools to make the game a little bit more interesting. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I've seen some right. of the maps uh, Creighton shared on Twitter. There were one really funny with Grunt Unit, well, Light Grunt Unit becoming Air Units on specific zones. I really, really think it can be really fun. But of course, you can't really add it on a lot of map pool, I guess, because it would just destroy the balance of the game. Yep, possibly. <laughs> Quite possibly. Well, I think even even though like a lot of these maps will because they're very gimmicky, I think it's the right way to explore how you can utilize it in a fair and balanced format. Because I think about yeah. um, like the acceleration zones. Uh, five years ago, I think if we would have pitched that as an idea, people would have been like, "What? That's that's impossible! You're gonna make you're gonna make Hellions broken. You're gonna make Zerglings broken. Broken. What what options are gonna be available?" But now we're seeing that as a core mechanic in what two of our current maps in the pool. So I think I think the exploration is really really neat. Hopefully it shows us something new that we can tap into. Would you like yeah. to see more original maps uh, on the map pool sometime? I like the silly maps. I really do. I know I'm not a pro player, so of course I I'm not the one that's like, oh well, I I just want to play macro games. So of course now I can't have any a variety in my band because I got to ban this one. I got to ban Golden Wall. I've got to ban. Um, uh, red shift I've got to ban the weird ones but mm. from like a viewer perspective like the the unique maps are fun they are yeah. interesting to watch I think I think also a thing is with um, I, I think one of the arguments against having like more unique maps and more variety in the map pool consistently right rotating back to old maps whatever is that uh, pro players then of course can't practice as well on the maps that they are going to play in uh, or on in tournaments uh, overall. And then you won't get as a refined tactic. You won't get as refined strategies from these players. So that would lessen the experience overall of the esports because of that. But at the same time, I feel like uh, maybe you're not so much uh, making the show about just this showing the skill of somebody preparing incredibly well and executing something in the perfect 10th degree. But instead, if there's more mechanics and there's more ways to be creative, instead the competition becomes more so, uh, in, you know, to support creative play as well. And then creative players will be um, maybe the players that suddenly start winning a lot more games. Um, at least at the first moments when those maps get out, you might get some more rotation with like players that are more creative. They might start winning early on. And then later on, those other players that are more methodical and like to have things completely thought out uh, they catch up and then later on they start winning the tournaments um so yeah I, I i think i think it would be a good thing overall okay just map variety more maps mm -hmm. make it happen make them crazy make them silly whatever yeah i think players want required. maps too <laughs> we all want new maps at least with a new season i guess uh, i hope we'll not have again submarine and again this era. how do you feel with this map pool at the moment I think it, of all the map pools we could have been stuck with for a long period of time, I think we did luck out. I think this is the map pool in the last couple of years that has the most standard maps. And even even like the weird ones that are there, they're not too weird. They're not too out of line. So, I mean, like Death Aura, despite having the acceleration zones in the center, still plays rather standard. Um, Submarine is, uh, despite being short, is still a very standard map right now. And uh, what would be what would be like the other weird one? Um, I guess Yaganata. Um, it's just a tall map, but yep. again, like you can split you can split it down the middle and play some really long drawn out games. And and I've actually seen some pretty long drawn out games on Submarine as well. So, despite the fact that they are getting stale, I think we could have been in a lot worse position for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, now it's the time everyone is waiting for to tell your friends to join us because it's time for the quiz. So let's oh, quiz. add, and there is scores, of course, to see who is going to win. <laughs> are, you, are you confident about the quiz, guys? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, gonna take this one home. Okay. Kozan? Do, will like you win the trophy? 
<laughs> any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, so the first question does not give you point. It will just give you a lead for the second question, okay? What? Okay. Mm. You, and it's a, just a um, speed question. The first answer wins. Who, uh, which, uni, uh, which building in StarCraft 2 has more life points? Did he drop out for you? Oh, Is hello? Which, unit, which, which building has more the, life points? The, you know, you went quiet yeah. for us. <laughs> Which, uh, which or is he so? wanting to ask us who, which has the most? Yeah. Oh, which just the buildings? most in overall. Yeah. Uh, I'd say battle the Nexus. Oh wait, uh, units. Oh, the fuck. buildings, building, building. Sorry. Building. building. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'd be is Nexus. It? No, not Nexus. Not Nexus. Is it uh, a planetary fortress. I don't not know. planetary fortress. No. Uh, oh, some buildings in the campaign as well. They must. They must. One of those must be. Quite, quite heavy on the HP. It can't be hatchery or no, hive. Yeah, it's hive. hive. Congrats, Rashi. Oh, so, uh, let's go. <laughs> but this does not give you point. But it will uh, help you for the second question because the second question is the price is right. I will ask you a question, and the answer is a number, and you have to find the number more or less few, um, few points. Okay. So I ask okay. a question and you tell me if you want to answer first or if you let Kozan answer first. The first to answer, if he's right, he wins, else the other one can make a guess. And in the meantime, I say more or less, basically. Okay. Okay. So the question okay. is, more or less five shots. How many shots of siege tanks do you need to destroy a hive? Do you want to answer first or to let Kozan answer this question first? I'm going to answer that. Okay. Because it should be more. More than how many? No, you More than five. No, that's what no, 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 no. You have to say a number and you're right if it's more or less five shots from what you said. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and we're talking about like one siege tank, right? Yeah, one siege tank. And be careful, I have as regeneration too. Uh, oh, okay. I would say it takes 12 shots. It's more, because on your turn. Um, 19. 19, it's more, but Rexto 125, it's less. <laughs> Rushy, your turn. Really? Um, well, I guess it's a hive. Okay, 23. It's more, because on your turn. Wait, you said it was less than 25? No, less no, than 125. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, less than 125. That was uh, Rex Store uh, on Sound Chat. Is it, is it 24 then? Am I crazy? Let's just go up one by one, Rush. <laughs> well, five by five, because if you say and it's five, more fi or oh, less five, it's good. Five more? Um, 20, 20, 20, 20, 27. It's more! Rush, your turn! 34. Yes, well, it's 37, but you're oh, in the range. So many! <laughs> yeah, right? It's uh, It has a lot of life points. I've asked, like, I don't remember how many, but. Wait, is it in siege mode or is it not in siege yeah, mode? In because... siege mode? Yeah, in siege mode. Yeah, in siege mode. I said a siege tank. <laughs> yeah, sure! Oh, man. It is indeed 37. It's a lot. Insane. And I saw a tweet from a Clem's dad a few days ago. He checked uh, how um, auto attack from an item plot can kill an ultralisk, uh, but it takes six hours or something like this. That's what at least Clem's dad say on the uh, on the on Twitter because there is a regeneration which is slightly lower than the DPS from the oh. item plot. Wow. Pretty insane. <laughs> All right. Okay, question two. There are five StarCraft 2 questions and then non StarCraft 2 questions, but continue with StarCraft 2 questions. Uh, and now this is a speed question. So the first to answer wins. What is the most expensive unit? Carrier. No. No, it's not. It's Kozan? Mothership. It's Broodlords? Yeah, it's Mothership, Rashi. 
Point number two. What am I doing? It's the mothership. 400, 400, baby. Yeah. Of course. You guys know the men, right? We're a hero unit. <laughs> didn't see anything else would be included. <laughs> <laughs> it's going swimmingly so far. All right. Okay, who won the most game in Shoutcraft Kings? Who won the most games in Shoutcraft? It's probably innovation. Nope. Um, well, I mean, probably that's that's total biscuit time. So, yes. uh, would that be like MC? Nope, it's a foreign your player, Cosa Newton, maybe Stefano. Nope, it's not a French player, is she? Would have made um... sense if it was a French player to start asking this question, then it's kind of where my mind went. It must be a French player because Miguel's asking the question, but it's not, it's not all right. Is it French Canadian? No, it's not. It's actually a no. Polish player, guys. The Polish oh, mana. Oh. No, it's not mana. Oh. Uh, Nurcio? Exactly. Really? Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> Rashi taking the third points already. Kozan, I thought you were going to win this. You have to come back. Really? <laughs> I thought I would win this. Well. But be careful, the next one is really easy. What is the team of the player special? It's excellent. Uh, team Exxon. Yes. Kozan first. A bit faster. Oh. And he's coming back in this quiz with the last One stack of... points on the board. One last stack of two questions. questions. Are left still? Well, there are five SC2 questions, five not SC2 questions, and then I'll tell you for the third quiz because there are okay. more points. You, you can come back for sure with... First of all, this fifth and last uh, StarCraft 2 question. Where does the famous Dennis Galen live? Oh, um, Krefeld. Yes, he is. Rashi, who is he? Who is, uh, is Take name? TV. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Four points. That's an odd question for, for you. Sure. Okay, we continue with a speed question, but it's not SC2 anymore. In the first edition of Star Wars 4, in the cantina scene, who shot first? Oh, it was uh, the Spelunky uh, guy, right? No, wait, what's his name? What's his name? <laughs> the big bulgy eyes. Oh, oh uh, Jar Jar Binks. No, well, no. Oh, that was for Jar Jar Binks. How dare you, This is the first episode. This <laughs> no, is the hand solo. <laughs> Yes, it oh is Han Solo. It's Han Solo, and it's this other guy. What's his name? Greedo. I know. What's it? What does he say? Kaplunky Cap or something like that? Is what he says when he shoots. I, I don't, don't know. know, but it's Greedo, his name. And yeah, Han Solo. Uh, he shot first. Yeah, in the first edition, it's Han Solo, and then because it was not good to have Han Solo shooting yeah, first, they make Greedo shot first, and fans were really unhappy about it. Do you guys know and right. like Star Wars? So I was wrong then. I was a Star Trek person, so if it's more Star Wars, I, I, I might be in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to watch Star Wars, but then the first one I saw was a videotape of the, um, whatchamacallit, the new one of the new trilogy, or well, the newer back in the day, um, as the prequels, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it got stuck in the video deck, and uh, we never got it out, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's uh, go to our second question then, if you guys don't like the best uh, films that have ever existed in Earth. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, let's go for the second question. It's a video game question this time. In what province of Tamriel the Elder Scrolls III takes place? Uh, Morrowind. Exactly, Rashi. Amazing. Is that a province? I don't know. Did you Sorry, guys play uh, the Elder Scroll? Yeah. I've played Oblivion and a little bit of Skyrim, but not a lot of both of them. Okay. And I played some Oblivion, some Skyrim, yeah. You liked it? Fun stuff. Yeah, fun stuff. Okay. I like the, uh, like, you know, the open world sometimes. It's okay. Don't do it as much anymore, but yeah. Okay. Um, okay, let's go for history question, but not in any history. The best one, the French history question. Hmm, Germany. Oh boy. No, that's not the answer, but it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, which French head of state was the last to hold the title of Emperor of the French? Clem. 
It's a good <laughs> answer. That's a. And it would be Napoleon, wouldn't it? It is, but which Napoleon? Clem is the emperor. Uh, Napoleon the sixth. Absolutely not, Rishi. Cousin, do you have the good Napoleon? <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte uh, the... Um, I think it was just the second. No, it was the third, but actually Napoleon the second never ruled. So there were only two Napoleons who were emperor. Anyway, a bonus point for Cousin for saying Clem. Hey, yes. Wow. And I, actu I actually wrote on my paper here, I wrote Napoleon the third or Clem works too. So no. <laughs> this is... This is <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. It's I the know there are multiple up. Napoleons. All right, I learned something new. Okay, the fourth question is... Uh, actually, it's funny because you just talked about it, Freshie. How many, if you don't count the animated series, how many Star Trek official main series is there? He's a Star Trek guy. He knows this. I'm oh. going to say... All right, uh, 12. No. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Seven. Can you name them? Oh my gosh. Um, Journey Home. Uh, the Next Generation. Um, was... Just the original. Um, the the Khan. The no. What? I I don't know that it's I can a name movie. them all. Um, Star Trek. Um, I don't think I can name them all. But is it seven? <laughs> it is seven. The original <laughs> series. New, um, a new generation, uh, DS9, Voyager, uh, there is um, Enterprise, Discovery, and finally Picard. So that's actually seven. Um, right. So, <laughs> what kind of series do you guys watch? Do you watch series and which kind of series? Uh, I mean, I I grew up with the next generation. My dad was a huge Trekkie, and uh, he always told me a story about how we would watch the next generation and dad would narrate it's that's the one with the the famous narration space the final frontier <laughs> and i was a young enough child he would hold me and as the enterprise would come swooping in he would uh, he would swing me in the air and that's like a story that always sticks with me so next generation is good jean-luc picard the best star trek captain uh did you watch star trek cousin um it, it pops on tv space sometimes time. but yeah, I never, I never really watched it that much, honestly. Uh, I watched Bubble Star Galactica. That, that, oh, that it's is, the best that's series! another good one. Oh, it's so yeah. good. It's my favorite series ever, Battle Star Galactica. Yeah. And what else do yeah, you like this. do you watch? Because what kind of series do you watch? Um, right now, I, I really watch a lot of everything. I, I guess what I don't watch would be like uh, just overall the thrillers or like the the gory kind of nonsensical violence kind of thing that i don't know never really uh got my interest but i right now what i really like to watch is just a lot of those shows of like british television where it's just comedians sitting together and kind of talking uh trash or doing doing a quiz or something silly and that that is uh something that i like to watch a lot right now like taskmaster is one and uh, eight out of uh, ten cats does count down something like that british television uh, okay, Rashi, do you uh, accept, uh, of course, a Star Trek? Do you watch series? Um, I, I don't, I can't say that I've actively watched series recently. Uh, some of the ones that, uh, that I have been going through, uh, uh, like Battlestar Galactic has been on our list. Um, I'm a big Law & Order fan, so Law & Order Special Victims Unit is a very good, uh, show that I've watched. Um, Scrubs is, like, maybe one of my favorite TV series of all time. Um... What have we watched a lot of lately? Really? It's just kind of been uh, nothing in particular. Just throw something on TV. Um, Stargate SG-1 has been another good one. Okay. Oh, yeah. And this is the last question of this second quiz. And this time it's a music question. But ah, ah, ah. what music? Okay. What music? Yeah, it is, of course. It is, because uh, you can do it, we believe in you. What mm. music group made the song Where Is My Mind? Where's my, my what? My mind. Oh, my mind. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Probably the Beatles, right? Nope. There's my mind. Does the chat have a new song? 
It no, uh, 1988. Wait, I'll just do it on my phone so people see that I'm cheating. What? Rextor has it on the chat, he's a pixies. One point for Rextor and shame on our two guests today, especially Rushi. He plays 1000 instruments but does not even know the pixies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Alright, I, I, I'll give that credit to Rextor. That's a, that's a good moment. And now it's time for the, uh, an, a third Rextor's quiz. Rextor's gonna get more points than I have in this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, continue my comments. So the last quiz is a bit hard for me to set up. Let's see if it works. Okay, I'm going to send you on the Discord uh, server. Um, I'm going to send right. you a picture of a StarCraft 2 player. I will also show it on the stream, but uh, that's why you have it at the same time. You have to tell me which StarCraft 2 player it is, basically. Okay? Their name or their username? Oh, uh, their username. Okay. It's gonna be Clem. <laughs> yeah, why are they all gonna be Clem, but in like yeah. a mustache <laughs> There's and different hat pictures and... of Clem <laughs> of Miguel's collection. <laughs> that is... Uh, yeah, but Clem the first pictures. one might or might not be Clem. Let's go. Hmm. Okay. First play. Oh, um, Jon Snow. Yes, it is indeed Jon Snow. Let's give you the point. Um, where Where is my schools? Oh, yeah. It was indeed Jon Snow. Congrats. That was fast. You know, I have to, to take back my second uh, picture. <laughs> Not the easiest way to do, but... Could have sworn that was Clem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Clem got really tall, what? <laughs> yeah. And for Psystorm Gaming? Oh no. Yeah, he's, like, he's actually happened? not tall. Clem is everything, but he's not tall. <laughs> 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 Ready for the second one? Let's bring it. Let's go. Oops, I didn't send it to you. I sent it to myself, so it was <clears throat> less effective. No, it's new. Yeah, I think Cosente told it first, but yes, it is indeed Snoot. Might be EU latency helping me out here. Ah, <laughs> I was gonna say a lag, lag, lag. Can we, can we please meet on NA West or NA East? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, switch between picture. We switch. Those. Yeah, go back and forth. Yeah, that's Ready. the way we do it. For the third one, right. it's maybe less easy. Less easy. Oh. Um. Oh, it's uh, it's a. Uh... <laughs> Place for Black Knight. He was. I don't. I'm not sure he's still on this team. I don't think it exists anymore. But he's Zerg. I feel like it's a Terran player. Is Zerg. It, is he Zerg? Oh, yeah. Fuck. I'm off, man. It's a Titan like... EX player, so it's recent. Or Titan EX sponsor. Um, I honestly don't know. It is. Um, wait, 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 I'm waiting. Wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, midnight or something, some Korean name, something that they would like. It's Harmony. I, I give up. Harmony. 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 Oh. Harmony. Okay. What okay. Name I recognize. And let's Warface. go with the last one. Ah, midnight was close, I'd say. <laughs> you guessed up. A two-syllable name, good for you. Yeah, just, just a, <laughs> an English word. That kind of sounds cool. Ready for the last one? Yes. Let's go. Is that um, nice? No. Nope. Daring in my soul, though. That's for sure. It's not Haas. It is not. Um, let's say it's, um, it's the Chinese special, uh, special if he were Chinese, it's photoshopped, it's special. It is not, and it is really Chinese. mean also. No. Oh no. Rex Store, maybe know. someone on, someone on chat, maybe someone on chat has it. Oh, no one. Um, yeah, I don't know who that is. I don't think anyone has it on the chat. It is a male Micah. Mail, oh. Micah. All right. Okay, at least I know the name. I yeah. don't think I've ever seen his face. And now we have the last, but not least, quiz for three points. The winner wins three points. So if it's Rushi, he wins. If it's Kozan, it's a tie. Okay? Oh. 
This will uh, be a contest between you. You will have to defend something during two minutes exactly, okay? I will tell you to defend something and you will try. And the more convincing, I will make a, a poll on the chat, the most convincing uh, for the viewers will win, okay? All right. Amazing. So you will have to defend because then that e Europe is better than NA and Russia is at NA is better than you, okay? And given that it's obviously easier for Kozan, he will be starting so where she can answer to his uh, arguments, okay? Yeah, all right. All and right. you have two minutes, let's go. Two minutes? I think, I think I can do this in one minute. I mean, I mean, just, just look at them, at them. <laughs> it's just, they try to play, but it's not really getting anywhere, right? And uh, honestly, I mean, it, it, they try to be like EU, right? They see they see the Serals, the Rainers, the Clams, uh, three already right there, three marvelous reasons. Um, I feel sorry for you, Rashi, that you have to defend such a <laughs> poor nation that does not know how to play StarCraft 2 for some reason. I don't know. Good luck. Oh, that's it. Okay, 42 uh, seconds, and now it's your turn. Your turn, Rashi. You have two minutes to defend an NA. is better than you. Well, I, I think if we boil things down to pure statistics, um, let's, let's talk about the top of the top in StarCraft II content, and that's gonna be the GSL. Um, let, let's talk representation. So um, if we take a look at NA versus EU representation in the GSL, there is significantly more North American representation. You have Special, you have Neeb, you have Scarlet, who have all participated. EU, Serral, nothing. Rainer, nothing. Clem, nothing. No EU significant representation in the GSL. So at that point, if we're going to call GSL the, the top of StarCraft II contest and competition, clearly North America is going to sit higher than EU simply on representation alone, especially since both Scarlet and Neeb have made it to the round of four. Okay. Uh, well, and Estrella, Estrella. There's more. Remember that uh, Renault made the GSL once, so you forgot about this. But anyway, I'm not the one who picked the winner. Let me try a poll now. Woo. Yeah, let's create a new poll to let the viewers uh, decide who was more convincing. Who was the You had to dig deep there, Rashi. I, I respect you for finding such a statistic that is still you know, uh, would hold weight in some people's minds if they if they forget that, you know, they, they don't really perform at all <laughs> the GSL usually. I, um, I'm just saying my boy Neeb almost toppled <laughs> TY in the round mm -hmm. of four. And and that particular year, that was every every analyst's position. If Neeb gets through TY, he wins GSL. He's the first foreigner to ever win a GSL. Yep. Yeah. Because he would have gone up against a Protoss, um, and Neeb's PvP was unmatched at that time. Okay, well, it's, it's not working for some reason, so just type on the chat, Kozan or Rushi, and I will just come that way uh, to see who was the most convincing. I'm sorry, I don't know why the, the poll is not working. <laughs> and Kozan say Rushi. So that's one point each, guys, if you can write in the chat, Kozan or Rushi, depending on who was the most convincing. Okay, two votes for Rashi, one for Kazan. I feel like people are just gonna vote on which which <laughs> continent they prefer. Maybe. <laughs> Three, two for Rashi, four now. He is winning. The composition might be more so if we have more European viewers or American viewers. Well, that's I'm three sure. two for Rashi. So Rashi, you win <gasps> the contest. Um, <laughs> Let's put the score. You have three more points. It's a 10 for, oops. It's a 10 for, for Rashi. Congrats for winning this. Do you have uh, some words for your fans for winning this amazing trophy you were dreaming of uh, every night since years? 
Well, um, thank you. Thank you very much. I have been practicing very, very hard on my general knowledge of things, and uh, I'm really happy that I could show good games. And uh, please keep cheering for me as I uh, continue to fight in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. And uh, with this, we uh, switch to our next, next subject. Let's talk about you guys. Let's talk about our guest, of course. Uh, we want to know more about you. And that's what we'll do right now. So let's start. Where do you come from? So, of course, country we know, but cities. Is it a nice place? Kazan? So yeah, I, uh, I live in the Netherlands. It's um, near Harlem. Um, Uh, which is near Amsterdam, kind of, and uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a nice place. We live near the ocean, so we uh, we don't have a lot of snow because of all the salt. We have a lot of rain uh, overall. You know what? Dutch weather. Dutch weather. It um, you 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 gotta love it or you gotta hate it, um, but it will it will mess you up sometimes just uh, because rainstorms can arrive uh, in the blink of an eye at certain points. But uh, yeah, overall, it's a nice place. It's a nice place, fun people, friendly people, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Okay, Rashi? Well, I am from the central United States. I live in a state called Iowa. It's kind of right in the center. Um, we are home to a lot of uh, corn and soybean production for the world, and uh, it's not, not a whole lot uh, to speak of here. It's uh, just starting to become spring right now, so um, starting to get warm outside. But um, nice, just quiet, small, little Iowa for me. Okay. Do you have brothers and sisters? Nope. I am an only child. Cause that. I have a I have an older sister. Okay. It's about like two years older than me. And what well, we did answer it a little bit, at least for Rushi. But what do you guys do for a living? Well, I, um, right. I, well, I'm a band teacher. Go for it. So, uh, I'm a high, I teach high school band, and I've done that for the last 10 years. Okay. And Kozan? Uh, well, right now, I do a couple of things. I look at the stock markets. I'm trying to get some illustration work on a website somewhere to sell stuff on T-shirts and stuff. Um, and I, for kind of the steady income, that is uh, a job I do at a medical business uh, they provide all sorts of uh, instruments and materials for people uh, for all sorts of ailments and uh, yeah kind of help them out making you know sure people are connected correctly um, yeah fairly simple stuff not too medical for my for my thing I'm picking up some things obviously but yeah just um, just a pretty regular kind of mundane job I would say okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about your hobbies and let's start with this on the stream. You can see amazing drawings from uh, from Kozan. So can you tell us first, what is this? This is me being bored at work, mostly. And um, yeah, so there's this thing I do where I just kind of make a shape and I, I try to make it whatever shape I can. Uh, and then from within that shape, I have to figure out how a face fits in that structure. And then um, sometimes it gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a lot of fun. Just, you know, something I, I do practice wise uh, overall. And uh, yeah, like I said, um, look, looking to maybe potentially get, uh, get a bit further with it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and now let's show something well on the stream. It's a video I found on a Twitter post from Rushi one year ago and Ooh. it's pretty amazing. So let's listen to this uh, music. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like, what did I, I was in quarantine a year ago. forgot about this. Is this you teaching children? No, um, you are really staring at us. <laughs> well, you know, um, it, I want to make it very clear. I'm actually wearing the same shirt in that. <laughs> so not 
planned at all. But um, no, uh, I was making a video uh, to work or to have my kids submit something for me. We were gonna do. We were doing like a, a recruiting project for this school year, and um, I was like, just make a thirty-second video of you playing something, and uh, it was. Um, Hajinson at the time. Um, Hajinson plays baritone and was a part of a brass band when she lived, I think, in Korea. So um, I made that video and I shared that and I tagged her on it on Twitter and she uh, retweeted it and gave it a little bit of uh, um, notability. But uh, but yeah, so I I learned the Terran One theme and that was really fun. I kind of forgot I made that video. Yeah, well, I found it funny. I found it by, uh, I was looking for a video from you on the, on the internet and I found this. And it was uh, a pretty fun. Um, okay, uh, do you have other hobbies I didn't find uh, by lo uh, stalking you on the internet? <laughs> um, I, I mean, most. this is mostly my hobby since I, I teach for a living. Uh, doing StarCraft and playing video games in general is... Uh, kind of what I do with my free time uh, outside of, I, I play with a few um, local bands. Like uh, there's a summer band about an hour away from where I live that I've been a part of since I graduated college in 2011. So I play some instruments over the summer uh, for fun, but otherwise StarCraft is my hobby. Okay. Kuzan? Um, I would just... So I, I like to climb as well. Well, bouldering, it's called. Uh, that's something I like to do. Can't really do it right now because of the lockdown, uh, unfortunately. Other than that, I yeah, I like to draw. I like to just make some animations now and again. Um, uh, yeah, video games, clearly. Uh, I, I'm I, not someone that sticks around in one game for a very long period of time, which, is, um, which makes it a bit more special that I've been with StarCraft 2 for... Well, yeah, potentially 10 years, somewhere around that mark now. Um, but uh, yeah, mostly that type of stuff, a little bit of sporting here and there. And yeah, that, that I mean, that's it, really. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of exciting hobbies, I suppose. Huh. Well, video games are kind of yeah. exciting, right? I think we could all agree on that. that is, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do your uh, in real life friends, sorry, uh watch you when you're casting Star Wars 2 or care about what you're doing uh, on uh, oh, the scene? Apparently, sometimes the um, a co-worker at work actually puts me up on his screen and then he gets other co-workers to be distracted from work by watching my commentary <laughs> at that moment in time. Um, That's amazing. Which, yeah, it is, it is fun. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does happen. <laughs> And then sometimes I just get weird remarks at work, like, uh, oh, hey, well, well done that yesterday. That was pretty fun or something like that. And uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, uh, that is a lot of fun. And then um, sometimes just friends pop into the, uh, the Twitch chat or the Trovo chat, depending on where I'm streaming. And um, yeah, yeah, they watch sometimes. I mean, they're, they're not as, you know, avid StarCraft 2 fans as I am myself, but they they like to just hang around that just uh, just to kind of see what i'm doing you know actually get their minds wrapped around what the hell is it that you do even uh with this type of stuff okay and what about you rashi um i i kind of have a mixture of answers here um i would say my friends like my my close irl friend group um occasionally will watch and support i've got a i mean uh, one of my friends is the reason I got into StarCraft in general. So uh, big shout out to him. He supports me a lot. Uh, the people that I work with know that I, I stream and that I play StarCraft. Um, I think a lot of them just like, it's it's still very much like, oh, it's video games, not that big a deal, whatever. Um, I've got a lot of students that actually tune in and watch as well. And a few that are active subscribers. So that's kind of unique and interesting as well. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, you have said uh, you loved video game, of course. So let's talk a little bit about the video game you like. What, what is the first video game you played in your life when you was young, when you were young? Oh my gosh, it's a big question. 
Um, I think my first memory of a video game was Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. And I played it with my dad because, uh, and this is a really funny, silly story. I couldn't stand watching when you would get the secret keyholes and it would zoom in and do the boop. it scared me <laughs> so anytime we had to do that i talked to him i had to get my dad to come do it for me because i couldn't watch <laughs> <laughs> and what about you cousin what was your first game i i'm trying to think back but back in the day i don't know if you guys also are familiar with these types of things but you, you used to have the, the game boy clearly mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you would have like replications of that uh where it would be its own little tiny handheld console but then uh, it would just have one game right you wouldn't have a cartridge or anything it would just be one game and then you would have the tetris console or something like that right and i would have all their cousins that were um a lot more further along because they were older And uh, they would have these uh, <clears throat> little handheld cons uh, consoles where I would be able to like kind of play Tetris, I believe. And maybe they had a different game, maybe Pong or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, like really, really early on games like that, but then cheap replications of, of those games. Um, probably the first things I played, I would say. And then straight afterwards, probably Pokemon, which got, which got pirated by my cousins again on my PC. Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably that. Okay. Um, did you play with your parents when you were young? Did they made you play video games? Or were you more the kind of, oh my god, I'm going to play alone? What was their behavior uh, related to video games, cousin? Honestly, my... I think my dad, he used to be kind of interested in just the overall idea kind of getting to know it but then afterwards uh we probably played like a two or three times uh he realized that there's no way i'm beating this kid at this stupid game and he never picked it up again <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that's that's like no they, they never really would play with me any type of those games but then again back in those days i was very competitive like i i did not take a loss very easily like I was a difficult child when it came to losing, um, but yeah. So maybe that played a role as well. They just didn't want to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I played uh, games with my dad a lot. Like uh, I talked about Super Mario World with him, but uh, dad and I played Diablo 2 and Warcraft 3 together. Um, we also played uh, another RTS, very old one, if you know, Total Annihilation. That was probably my first RTS game that I ever played, and I played that with Dad a lot when I was younger. So um, my dad's a, a computer scientist, so it's gaming and computers are just kind of always run in the family. I built my first PC with my dad and um, lots of games. Most recently, uh, when, I, when I became an adult and I moved out, we didn't play as often, but occasionally we've played Borderlands as of late. Uh, it's a game that we both really enjoy, and Dad's big into Pokemon Go. So, <laughs> okay. my mom was never really interested, but was always very supportive. Well, um, also, what are your favorite kind of game? Of course, uh, RTS, but other than that, what video game? Well, kind of video game did you like the most, or do you like the most? Uh, I love RPGs, um, especially like the JRPGs. Uh, I was big into the Final Fantasy series. Um, really love Kingdom Hearts, uh, that whole series as well. Uh, I, I do like first person shooters. I played a lot of Call of Duty when I was in college and still play like Warzone um, the, these days. Uh, puzzle games are fun. Uh, strategy games just in general kind of dominate a lot of what I play. Uh, one of the games I probably have the most hours logged into is uh, Final Fantasy Tactics series. I played Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. That was the one for Game Boy Advance. And then they came out with a second version for the Nintendo DS. And uh, I mean, literally thousands of hours dumped into the, those games alone. So um, I, I like a wide variety. And Kozan. Yeah. I think, you know, also a wide variety. It depends on, like, which stage in my life I was, I suppose. Uh, there were stages where I was more comfortable just spending hours upon hours in RPGs and MMOs and stuff like that. And it was really cool. It was amazing, fun stuff to do. 
Uh, but I don't know. Right now, I, I kind of like the games as well, but where it's just a, a simple, tiny mechanic or a simple, tiny idea. And then it just kind of is more so a party game that you're doing with friends and that type of stuff. Um, yeah, I think I like I like those games a lot outside of RTS. Um, yeah, but it's like a different type of enjoyment, right? RTS, very competitive. And then for regular games that I would like to just play for having fun rather than uh, getting enjoyments out of improvements and getting enjoyments out of just being able to uh, you know, execute a build very well and be mechanically uh, executing something properly. Uh, instead of that, just messing around with a bunch of, bunch of friends in whether that be Tabletop Simulator or I don't know, um, there's this thing called God Tick Phone that we're playing now and again uh, recently. Um, yeah, there's some just fun little tiny party games with, uh, with friends. Okay. Okay, let's ask you another question. Cousin, why do I call you Cousin? So, where does your nickname come from? Well, um, it used to be a World of Warcraft character. I used to be called Cousin in uh, World of Warcraft. It used to be a, a Tauren Paladin. And uh, yeah, afterwards, from, from there, I went into StarCraft 2. And I kind of carried my name along because a lot of the people that I was playing World of Warcraft with were going to play StarCraft 2 that was coming out at the time. People were very excited. It's like, oh, it's a new game by the same makers as World of Warcraft. Let's go all play it together. And um, yeah, I, I just kind of stuck around with the name because that's what everybody knew me as. And it, it felt very awkward to suddenly kind of change that. So it, it just stuck around because, yeah, my, my friends just called me that. Okay, and Rashi, what about you? I think it's a long story because I heard your interview with um, don't remember uh, Iroth, I think. Yeah, What's yeah, the... with Airet, and and I've talked about it on my stream a couple of times, and I can do the abbreviated version. Um, a long time ago, I was on a for internet forum, and I just used like a generic uh, Japanese name Ichiro uh, for my. Uh, my handle and through the course of time as i started to get into different like games uh, i started playing league of legends after college and um that wasn't an available name so i was like well what do i what do i do um so i put like a just a generic word in front of it so i put rush and became rush ichiro um, when i started streaming i used that as my twitch handle and it's a long kind of arbitrary name and people started shortening it to rushy if they would just like message me in chat or something. And I kind of liked Rushy. It seemed simple. It was short. It was catchy and it was unique. So I kind of rolled with it. So I can't even tell you who specifically like drove that point home and switched me over to Rushy. But uh, I, like I said, I liked it a lot and it just kind of stuck. Okay. Um, let's talk about your first steps in RTS. Did you start with a Brood Wars? Did you play Brood Wars before playing StarCraft 2? Nope. Because that either? Okay, so you started directly with Star Wars 2? Or was that uh, your first RTS from Blizzard? Or did you play Warcraft 3? I played Warcraft yeah. 3 before I played uh, StarCraft. Did you like yeah, it? Yeah, I, I used to play uh, Warcraft 3 as well. But then uh, before that, Red Alert 1 was the, the first RTS. And did you prefer Warcraft 3 or StarCraft 2? I like StarCraft 2 more. Okay. And you, cousin? Yeah, StarCraft 2. Uh, I, I like StarCraft 2, just the pace of it, just uh, how quick battles can go, kind of, in a sense. I think WarCraft 3 uh, brings its own kind of flavor with all the micro and stuff, uh, which can be fun as well to watch. But yeah, I, I, I just like the fast pace of StarCraft. OK. Um, your casters. So one of your, you're like the person that is between the players on one side and the community on the other side. So I want to ask a question about esports and how it's kind of hard still in the society to make this, um, uh, I would say, it, uh, possible for everyone to understand and stuff. Do you think um, there is something we, co we could do to make it uh, easier for uh, rookies of esports to uh, understand more and join? Personally, I think it's um, to, to learn a game like StarCraft 2, 
really all you can do is just have a friend that is already invested into starcraft 2 and then that person kind of take taking you along i think that's the best way to do it that's how i personally kind of got the most people into starcraft 2. um yeah just really on an individual level just kind of you know showing them the game showing what it's about uh maybe showing some of the cool parts right and then later on kind of showing them why it is so impressive and then slowly you know just kind of getting them into the idea of, of doing something like that but um it's a difficult one man i've i've put some thought into it I, i'm not quite sure if there's a really clear-cut solution other than just people that like starcraft 2 tell your friends that starcraft 2 is a really good game and get them get them to play the game as well uh, because otherwise I, d I don't think we could really um, expect something like that such a movement coming out of blizzards or any other uh, place um that's only going to come out of out of players you know sharing their passion that they have for that game well and i think that is uh, tr kind of true for most every game in the scene right now that's exactly how i got into starcraft i had a, a irl friend that was like hey i play this game i think you'd really like it and be like okay so we and and tried it out and it was fun and then i took my time to actually learn how to play the game by myself but um there was an interesting perspective i think it was uh was it 2017 or 2018 when they did the iem pyeongchang uh event uh ahead of the olympics and uh, it was the casting direction of the casters i think it was like maynard uh tasteless artosis and i think it was in control because in control was still uh, alive at the time and their whole idea was they were asked we want you to cast in such a way that you're trying to share information to people who have never seen starcraft ever and don't have any background knowledge. And it was kind of contested in the community a lot because a lot of the diehards are like, well, I don't need to know that Marines shoot up and down. I already know that. But but then people were like, but it's not for you. It's to help introduce a, a wider audience, people that maybe don't understand the game. And that's always been an interesting uh, divide in the community where I think there have been a lot of very prominent casters that try and take that sort of approach, but then are met with a lot of resistance by the people like, I already understand the game. I don't need to know those things. And the elitism of, well, okay, if uh, we're always going to take our most prominent people and uh, cast it to the people that know the game the most, we're going to leave out a lot of people that maybe have no idea what's going on and want to get interested, but don't have a way to figure that out. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, taking kind of that approach, but as a community, we have to be willing to embrace that and, and recognize like, wait a minute, this isn't for me. This is for other people. So that way we can keep doing more things. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay, well, let's talk about your first steps on StarCraft 2 then. Um, when did you start? So who uh, made you start? How did you start also by the campaign, directly going on into ladder? How, uh, just how did you start StarCraft 2, Kozan? Um, I started StarCraft 2 because of the World of Warcraft people. And then afterwards, how I started, it's... Um, I knew I knew it was mostly about the one v one, you know, kind of aspect of it. I, I realized that that was the the core gameplay. Uh, but before that, I, I would I, I did play the entire campaign, right, just to kind of get familiarized with the controls, that type of stuff. Um, it's you know the campaign is also what I did mostly in Warcraft three. Um, you know, I was just a young kid, just having a good time with a with a lovely story with some units. Not, not under too much stress. And then afterwards, I, uh, I I started doing more of the 1v1 as well. Okay. I played almost exclusively team games for the first three or four years that I played StarCraft because the 1v1 intimidated me in a large way. So, did you, did uh, you play 1v1s with AI as well before you started playing with uh, players? No? Nope. Nope. Okay. I I would play. The only one v one I would play was with my uh my IRL friend who was. It was so funny. He was he was a master level player at the time, and he would just tell me like, okay, so so I'm gonna 
I'm gonna not attack you for 10 minutes and you just do your thing. And after 10 minutes, we'll, we'll try and see what happens, okay? So like I get a second base up. I'm like, oh, I've got a hundred supply. I'm ready to go. Meanwhile, he's taking every single base on the map. <laughs> he's mined out most everything. And then he's like, okay, try and move out. See what you can do. And he just wrecks me in four seconds. So that was usually my experience from the get go. But um, it wasn't until uh, Heart of the Swarm that I actually started playing a 1v1 ladder and actually getting better. Are you better than your friend now? Uh, we're about the same. Uh, he is still a master level Terran and uh, just very good at the game. We go back and forth. Okay, interesting. Um, you, What race did you pick first? I guess you started with Zerg, was she? Yep. Why? Yep. why? I've always you... been Zerg. And why? So at the time, my friend uh, played Zerg. So when he was like, well, what do you want to play? And I was like, I don't know. What should I play? Well, I play Zerg. So that would be the easiest for me to teach you. So that's how I got started. Okay. And Kazan? I started with Protoss. Um, oh, really? And now you're playing everything yeah. but Protoss? What happened? Yeah, that's right. Well, the, the, the reason why I liked Protoss was that I saw, I saw Total Biscuit play and um well he wasn't very good at the game i didn't realize that he wasn't very good but there were these units that just kind of entered his base and started killing everything without him being able to do anything at all or not realizing that he could do something but yeah um not being able to do anything and i thought well this looks strong <laughs> and then all i did just every single game was dt rush people that was all i did i found a way to win starcraft 2 and I thought, wow, <laughs> this is the way. This is how you do it. This is how it works. And because it was my first kind of, you know, uh, real player versus player experience in a 1v1 setting on a competitive level, that was that was just it for me, right? Suddenly I found something that works, and that's just what I stuck to. Dark 10 plus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And today, you guys play, when you play, when you're not casting, do you play only 1v1s? Is there any other mode you like in the game? I typically play 1v1. Um, it's what I do most of, but I play lots of twos with friends. I've got some stream uh, viewers that I play twos with as well. Um, direct strike is always uh, fun to pull out in a pinch. And recently, I, I played a game with Loco TV. Um, it was like a, a kind of a, a reimagining of the original StarCraft campaign. It was it was really cool. Uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but he actually debuted it at BlizzCon. Uh, he was part of BlizzCon Online, and I helped out with that. So that was uh, kind of cool uh, mod game. Cool. And you, Kazan? Um, yeah. I mean, I like to do some team games now and again. The co-op mode can be a little bit fun now and again as well, but uh, most, <clears throat> most hours did go into 1v1 and yeah yeah as rushy said right just team games with friends a lot of fun uh direct strike also something i like to to get into there's there's a couple of games in the arcade that are pretty good and that are, are definitely worth checking out i would say okay um well it's time i guess to go to our last big subject of the day which is of course casting but i mean can we really talk with Kozan and Rashi about casting without showing you guys on the stream a short fragment of a cast they made together? So I decided to show you guys um, the end of the last game of the King of Battle. It was between Maru and Cure. And we're back in like four minutes to discuss it. And that gives us time to make a bio break, a break also. Let's go. Is a mix here, but I don't know how many he has, and it's difficult at times to try and differentiate all of the different <laughs> flying units. But it's got to be getting close to 10, that sweet spot where he has kind of lived in these previous games. Yeah, it's looking pretty darn great again there for Maru. Will he try to swing around here? That could be quite a decisive move as well. Looks like he will. The Siege Tanks will cure. Not quite ready in the position just yet. It seems like it's still a bit of a walk around around this uh, little bit of a weird curvature. Okay, the Siege Tanks instead for cure. Will Siege up on the high ground right now as Maru is trying to take this flight. I'm not quite sure if it's going into his favor though. Most of those Ravens do fall and Maru has to back out of here. Wasn't a great move there, but 
I mean, immediately Maru spiking back up on that uh, production here. Two siege tanks, four ravens continue to be produced. A lot of marines as well as we're seeing here. Not quite being able to keep up with that production on the same level. Oof. And that was not an overall great engagement by Maru. He loses a lot of those uh, ravens. It did come at the cost of 11 workers for Cure, but... Again, Cure's okay playing with that worker disadvantage. He's shown this time and time again. So now Cure's going to be able to add more army composition in. He's getting more of these Liberators. I actually kind of like this play in large amounts. Those Liberators could do a lot of AoE damage against the the air army of a Cure. But right now, going to be using them yeah. to hold down the ground forces of a Maru. Maru going to try and get on top of all of those, but it's just too much. Cure has some good reinforcing bio and it's going to be pushing further and further forward here. Maru needs to be careful. He does not want to lose a push here, but Cure almost overextending just a little bit as well. Oh, this is just nail biting right now, Rashid. <laughs> it's just, it's on a nice edge, truly. Uh, Maru trying to keep the, the offensive here, trying to keep maintain the positioning and maintain the focus of cure on this location precisely with those uh, with those missile turrets with the siege tanks continuously staying in that position but actually it looks like he's gonna try his luck on the other side as this allows cure to perhaps very quickly get on top of the other bases right here from maru most of his mining is on the left side it looks like no sir cure will try to uh, retaliate here with the push coming on the right side I'm not quite so certain he's going to get here in time, though. Those Liberators have quite a bit of work ahead of them. Once again, it's this weird scenario, right? Where we have these Ravens versus the Liberators. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how I feel about this for, for Maru or Cure right now. It's so hard to see... Uh, if there's any clear advantage because it feels like just the the moment one of them gets a pretty decent trade the next engagement it goes the other way and we just keep swinging yeah. back and forth it's a, such a pendulum style matchup here as we now see once again a big push forward here and maru getting the better trade end of this trade deal but where are the where's the air army of maru it's still trying to come on in but look at this liberator getting a little bit of work done <laughs> as well again it is just tit for tat against these two Cure is not going to go down easily. If he is going to exit 4-1, he is going to do it fighting to the bitter end. Resources lost tab. I've been trying to keep tabs on the, the overall resources lost. It's going up so equally right now. Okay, the Liberator will finally be able to get taken care of. And uh, well, at the same time, Maru also taking out another base there on the right side, or at least forcing the cancel. And now Cure, he is... I don't know, it's feeling like he's maybe a little bit surrounded. In come again, the spells from the Ravens. They have been able to make a lot of plays here happen for Maru. Is this the moment in time? The Marines coming in, the siege tanks are gone. The planetary fortress is all that stands. Is this the moment? Maru, will he become the king of battles? This base again getting evacuated. The supplies are looking all that great right now, Rushi. Oh, and there it is. GG is called, and you're king of battles with a 4-1 victory. And we are back after this uh, fragment of a cast. So let's start with this, guys, the king of battle. Uh, you cast it together on the A stream. How was it? Oh, it was It was just a, a great opportunity. It was, it was just a ton of fun. Um, I remember getting uh, asked to be a part of that and having kind of a moment where it was like, uh, me? Are you, sure? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> you want someone professional or something? Is that what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's really cool, right? Just being able, to, I mean, I would still say that is um, the, the coolest cast that I've, I've gotten to do so far. Um, you know what? Really, really cool from Sushi. Just organizing such a thing. And then, um, yeah, just letting his own casters take take the reins, right? That is, yeah, really cool stuff overall. Um, a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so you cast it together. How do you share roles? Do you talk before, like, I'm going to, to do this kind of comments when it happens on games or just, no? <laughs> I don't know because I want to smile. <laughs> Yeah, we, we just we just wing it, really, don't we? I mean, we just, we're, it's just like, 
basically what what it is um it's something that artosis always says right when um at least this is what i've heard that he always says and it, it kind of gave me an inspiration on how to approach this subject myself as well especially with just new it's not just with rushy right it's with any co-caster that you're experiencing with especially if it's kind of a new situation because i don't know rushy did we do a lot of casting before the the king of battles i don't think we did right maybe no. once or twice but nothing nothing that significant so it was still a little bit new for us as well, kind of working together. Um, but basically, really what it comes down to is that you're, you're just there with another guy that is just enthralled with what is happening on the screen with the game, StarCraft 2 in general, and you're just having a conversation with them, right? You're just talking about the game, and that's that all that's happening. That's all that needs to happen. Um, you're kind of describing it, and, and you're kind of having a good time with, with what's happening, and, and that's it. Yeah, and it's really feeding off of your co-caster, uh, seeing what is needed in the duo, because obviously there's a lot of like analytical talk, there's a lot of hype casting, there's a lot of uh, keeping track of what's happening that's not on the main screen. For me in the King of Battles specifically, I was also um, uh, helping out with uh, production, so uh, just kind of picking up the slack where um, we, we had, yeah. we always had like a text chat going on the side just to try and uh, communicate with each other when we couldn't say it out loud, and there would be a lot of moments like i gotta i gotta balance this audio issue you take over and uh and there were moments where cozy is like i gotta do this thing really quick rushy you 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 carry the load and i think that's i gotta do makes... photoshop quickly <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta i gotta update this graphic really fast yeah um but and i think it's just a lot of that give and take and being really really flexible that's what makes uh, any co-casting uh team okay yeah. And on the event of the King of Battle itself, what was good? What did you not like? Why, was there some problems at some point? Do you have some insight uh, to give us that no one knows about the tournament? Um, I think that Rushi was just doing all the production. That was just, you know, for me, it was it was smooth sailing because <laughs> of that, really. I, I could just kind of show up and be like, hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> As long as I kind of had a backup stream ready to go in case it was necessary, but um, yeah, so so for me that that was that was kind of <laughs> kind of relaxing in a sense. Uh, big props to Rushi for taking uh, taking care of all of that, of course. Well, and and the stressful part about that was is um, I was having a lot of hardware issues. I was learning very quickly that the graphics card that I had it was an AMD card um it's not the best for streaming yeah. uh, nvidia is kind of the industry standard and i was uh, trying to juggle uh, I had, like discord calls and overlays and we had all sorts of different like moving graphics for all of our overlays and my computer yeah. was just struggling so uh, we were running into uh, moments where like big heated engagements would happen and things would lag and of course everybody was like yeah. oh the stutter on oh, oh, stream what's what's happening um so i was trying to do all of that and then it was right before the final weekend uh, i'd actually purchased a brand new graphics card and uh, it, it worked out really well but it was very stressful trying to get everything all moving in the right uh position i was trying to upgrade my processor as well and then my processor that i bought wasn't working correctly so that was stressful yeah it just was a lot of behind the scenes stuff you put in a lot of work and efforts. I mean, you, you even made sure that there was a direct feed for me from you that I would be able to see what was happening on Discord live. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that's that. what was happening. Yeah, so so yeah, definitely. Uh, Matt props to to Rushi for uh, kind of handling all of that and uh, the other difficulties. I don't know. I don't know if there were any real difficulties overall. You know, when you're you're just in the moment, you're always just a little bit like. Well, this could have gone better. That could have gone better. <laughs> but in the end, you look back on it, and it's like, you know what? That went that went smooth. Uh, people got the Starcraft, and uh, we managed to we managed to do the casting that we needed to. And uh, yeah, well, that, that was a big event that we had Vitamin for, right? Because uh, yeah. Vitamin was our uh, oh, organizer right, yeah. behind the scenes that helped lined up everything. So we had 
um we yep. had mapu for that whole tournament as well so mm -hmm. um fortunately we didn't have to do any observing but uh vitamin controlling all of the player lineups and getting everybody into games and he was constantly talking to me he's like hey what do you need for production time so that we can uh, get started and moving i mm -hmm. don't think we could not have done that like uh, hands down could not have done that without him uh, or at least somebody in that capacity because yeah. things would have uh, got bottlenecked it would have been a lot to juggle so big shout out to vitamin for all the work he did with that another thing is why why you were streaming as well because this was happening before i got to upgrade my pc with the ram so if if i were the one to be streaming um we would have had a situation where it would have just been my webcam and not not rushy <laughs> Versus would have just been a standstill picture. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, because my, my PC would not be able to <laughs> to carry that for some reason. I don't know. Webcams, they, they can be uh, they can be troublesome sometimes on the RAM, it turns out. Yeah, well, right now my computer is saying, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Please, stop. <no. laughs> my CPU is at 91%. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> uh, mm. It's going to be hard when I'm starting. I'll start the game because we will play again because I'm against Rushi a bit later today. Uh, so yeah, you cast it with Mapu. You just uh, said it, Rushi. How it is to cast without having to opt? Because I guess it's cool, but it's maybe a bit harder because you can't opt what you are thinking about at the same time, you know? What does it change to cast with an observer? So, so here, here's the reality. Like, uh, Mapu's smarter than I will ever be at StarCraft, and uh, I think a lot of times it would be things that he would focus on. I was like, wow, I was missing that. This, let's talk about this. This is really important. So, um, just also not having to split my attention, or and I think Kozan can feel the exact same way. Just not having to split your attention on, okay, what do I want to talk about? But at the same time, I need to be looking for the thing that's happening on the map and glued onto the mini map um being able to just talk about what you're looking at is so much easier yeah yeah i think that's definitely a, a much better way to just kind of keep the conversation going sometimes you kind of i guess this also depends on like how how comfortable you are with doing this with an observer because sometimes if you're just used to being able to check everything um just out of share um yeah how used you are to just kind of talk about whatever comes in your head you'll be able to be like all right well that's that could be interesting to what it looks like on the units lost tab right now and then you realize wait a moment right i can't bring it up right now or <laughs> well, like but did he cancel that building or something like yeah so you can't actually do those checks at those moments in time but um if you if you get a little bit used to it right you, you kind of manage to roll with those punches and it, it becomes a lot easier you kind of find ways to talk around those types of issues um i still make clear what is actually happening in the game uh, regardless of not being able to continuously get all the information um that you you may want to have at that moment in time okay and uh well we saw uh, 10 minutes ago a uh, fragment of the last game of the final so do you remember the finals maru against q was it good how did he Fell to cast a so big uh, event, a so big finals with so uh, much money in uh, the game. Or she? I, I think. I think for me, it was just a lot of that pressure I talked about earlier. Um, TVT was not my strongest matchup. I'd say it still is not my strongest matchup to cast, and uh, having that many people watching two of the best Korean Terrans square off against each other, it was a. a, a a bit of a pressure moment and at that point it was also trying to juggle uh, all of the production stuff uh, as well so i think it was all just a unique um situation that we i think we did our best and and i'm proud i mean i would go back and watch i was watching a little bit of that clip during the break after i came back from uh stepping out to the restroom and and like i'm still looking at that as like that that cast holds up i thought we did a a, a job that i'm at least proud of and um had fun with it but i would have been so much happier had there been even just like protoss or zerg even one even a protoss <laughs> even a protoss at that point as long as it's not pvp all the way through <laughs> <laughs> what have yeah. you cousin i think i think what really helped was just the overall storyline that was developing for cure as well right just uh, that was mm. what really kept me going and what, what helped me just kind of revitalize the interest continuously and really boost that kind of storyline. This is Cure, always struggling to perform in Premier Tournaments. Now we have an online Premier Tournament 
And he's been able to take out Cyril. He's been able to take out Reyna. He's been able to take out these big titans that we kind of were expecting to meet Mario in the finals. And then suddenly, you know, there he is in the finals. Can he take down the fi take down the final hurdle? And that just that story overall, really, uh, it, to me, it made it an easier cast, right? Because you feel very invested um, because you you follow this storyline along. You you yeah, you've been explaining it. You've been molding the story in a sense, right? As a cast, as you do, you kind of trying to add pieces or take away pieces from the story now and again. And um, yeah, you get really invested. And that, that made it, for me at least, it, it felt uh, easy to do because of that, right? Okay. So. <laughs> well, let's go back a bit uh, earlier, uh, bef way before the King of Battle. When did you uh, start casting and why? What did you, what, what were you thinking? Like, oh, I'm going to cast. Uh, where did it come from, cousin? Um, I started casting when there was uh, a long time ago. There was a team called Firelight, and I joined the team speak. They all said, "Is this total biscuit talking?" It may have been my microphone at that moment in time. Uh, maybe I had a bit more of a British accent as well. But uh, yeah, overall, um, I, I was getting a lot of compliments about my voice, and you know what? stroking my own ego i suppose so it's like all right well let's let's try to do some casting here and see if people actually enjoy it people uh people say it was good and uh, i just kind of kept it going after a while um kind of stopped it and then picked it up again with uh with a new team uh met fast fast got me into alpha x and, and yeah that just kind of uh very quickly it, it picked up i was like all right i want to do more casting i really enjoyed small team leagues with my own team right just like five fewer type of thing, uh, StarCraft 2 casting. And then, um, yeah, after a while, I was like, I want to get back into this. Fars got me into Alpha X and Lemo, there I was, just never stopped anymore. <laughs> what about you, Rashi? So mine actually goes back maybe a little bit further. Uh, so outside of gaming and StarCraft in general, like I was big into TV broadcast. Uh, in high school, we had a state-of-the-art TV broadcast studio that I took uh, classes through for three years of my high school experience. And in college, I uh, stayed with our college TV station. I was our sports director for two years and just always felt really comfortable in front of the camera doing um, kind of TV related stuff. So when I started playing StarCraft, it, it never really crossed my mind other than something of, oh, well, this is kind of cool. Um, I could see myself doing this. It was in 2017 when I went to DreamHack Atlanta. It wasn't a specific like StarCraft II event, but Base Trade TV was hosting a $5,000 tournament. I signed up for it just to say that I did. And I was like a low Diamond 3. I got squashed, admittedly so. But I sat down next to a player by the name of Sure Should I, who was involved with Proxy Tempest at the time. Uh, they no longer exist, but like Lady Azalis uh, was in charge of that organization. And I got to know him a little bit and we, we kind of talked after that event. And he said, hey, I mean, you seem like a really charismatic person. Would you int be interested in like helping out with this? So I subbed for one night, got into it, kind of enjoyed it. And uh, the rest they say is history. Um, I, I casted with Proxy Tempest for the longest time. Um, I started getting involved with uh, Alpha X before it was Alpha X. It was uh, Psionic Aftermath right before uh, the big switch changed. And um, when I uh, got fully involved with Alpha X, got asked if I wanted to do any casting because they saw me for Proxy Tempest. And I said, yeah. So took advantage of some of the smaller opportunities. And then it was quarantine that really catapulted me into some of the bigger uh, opportunities, casting Korean events, uh, being able to cast for ESL, uh, the King of Battles, obviously. So. And yeah, and I'm still casting to this day. Uh, really don't do a whole lot because of school. School takes a lot of my time. So being able to do like the junior championships is nice because it happens on the weekend. But um, I'm hoping this summer to maybe uh, get some bigger events again. Okay. So you were talking about uh, you started broadcasting and streaming before you started casting StarCraft 2. And what about you, Koza? Did you also start streaming uh, before you started casting? Or did you only cast uh, StarCraft 2 and that's it? No, I think I only casted StarCraft 2, really. Uh, maybe I tried to do some streaming here and there. Um, to be fair, like, 
I did do the Overwatch stuff in between as well, right? So when I was doing small team stuff and before I joined AlphaX, there was the Overwatch period in between. Um, and that's when I made a lot of YouTube videos. That's when I did do some um, some Twitch stuff as well, just kind of, uh, you know, kind of more of a coaching thing rather than uh, actually commentary. I never really done commentary for Overwatch, maybe like once or twice, which was kind of fun as well, but the opportunities never just really arose. So um yeah and starcraft 2 just a lot more fun as an esports like so much better so much better to watch in my opinion but anyway yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i think we all think this that's why we're here right now uh are you guys more uh, more uh, play by play a uh, caster hype caster analyst caster which kind of caster are you rashi i'm definitely a hype caster <laughs> and koza yeah I think I think um, I'm like in between a hype caster and a little bit of like I try to do analytical stuff, but usually when I do, it's more so like on a on a question basis rather than a pure saying like if this is what it is. Um, just kind of starting a debate in a sense, but yeah, it, it's hard to say. I, I I try to do my own thing, and my own thing. I mean, it it, it is evolving as every time I cast, kind of in a sense. Um, not always in the right direction, but um, yeah, I, I just I just try to be myself, and I I suppose more leaning towards the hype and play by play. Okay, um, is there a specific caster that inspired you in the past or now? Cousin? Um, I mean, yeah, quite a few actually. Um, I mean, Total Biscuit, really, the first one that is the the guy that got me into StarCraft two, really. And um, Tasteless, Artosis, I, I really enjoy watching those two together, right? Always great banter. Day nine, um, a figurehead continuously, just uh, always so much fun hearing how he describes things and how he talks about things. Those those guys in particular, I would say, really on the, on the top of the list. But yeah, I mean, a lot of other people closely following. Um, but yeah. I'd have to say, um, like, Fear Dragon and Nathanius are probably two of the people that I've I feel like I've modeled myself after the most. Um, I wish I was way more analytical, but um, those are people that I really admire. Uh, of course, like everybody uh, has a lot of admiration for like Tastosis. Uh, they are they are the model casting duo that I think everybody tries to steal a little bit from. But yeah. um, but. Yeah, just there's just a lot of really great casters, and I think everybody brings something unique and interesting to the scene. Um, I would be remiss not to say In Control because he brought such a level of he was professional, but he found ways to be silly and goofy inside of that, and I loved that. He never took himself too seriously, and I mean, you could go back through like the hundreds of clips where he's making fun of himself, he's making fun of other people, and in such a positive, uplifting way that felt inclusive. And that's been something that I've always wanted to do as just a person, is just to bring everybody in. Try not to exclude anybody, uh, make sure everybody feels at home in a cast, being able to be a part of something that is bigger than themselves. So that's something that I always look for. Okay. Uh, what did you, what do you like the most uh, as a caster when you cast? What, what's your favorite thing? uh the big moments uh getting getting like a giant bane link connection or like the perfect engagement watching something unfold uh, as a player's taking a really big gamble and it pays off uh i think those are my favorite moments to get excited about i think i think my favorite moments really as like kind of a caster that does online matches and stuff I very much enjoy it when I see something new, something new develop in a game that I watched with like 200 other people. And then later on, you see that same player do the strategy in something like the GSL. And then you you see yourself already like, all right, I've seen this before. I know what's happening here. And then, um, you know, the two guys you look up to, Artosis and Tasteless, suddenly also discovering this new thing and then you're like ah i'm one step ahead this one <laughs> time and that is that's a lot of fun because then you know you're like all right so so how do they analyze it and then you can kind of compare and contrast and 
and see what what kind of use they have on the meta that that to me is like one of the really most fun things when you you've already seen something because you know you're you're really digging um uh, digging on the smaller matches but then when it, it suddenly appears on the big screen and everybody is hyped about it, it can, you can you know that that is one of my favorite things just kind of being like ah oh, yes I've seen them try this on the stream before in that one game I cast it. That was on, on our event happening right there. That's where he made this tactic and that's where he decided, you know what, this works. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, for me, that is a lot of fun. Okay. Is there a specific event you remember for being the best event you have casted or for a specific reason? If you had to remember one event, probably king of battle right probably yeah. just because yeah just because of the sheer size and volume of it um well yeah. i mean if if we had to narrow it down it's the Sarah maru uh mm -hmm. game because we were the first premier meetup outside of uh gsl versus the world and yeah. that was kind of a surreal moment um just even getting to see like um I, I still remember it was it was a moment where I, the very opening game i had chat open because i had it as a part of production but then i saw people in there like fear dragon roddy nathanius uh wardy all of these top tier casters commenting as they're watching and i was like i have to put that away because i'm gonna freak out if i do <laughs> or if i don't so um so i think that would probably be the one out of king of battles that sticks out to me the most yeah, and when when you see all those amazing casters, you 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 you, you know for for years, is it stressful? How do you do to still uh, keep calm, kill cool, and just cast? Do you have a specific strategy? I, I think a lot of it is, is just you just do your thing. Um, it's it's like anything else. You um, like, like in a game of StarCraft, like you you've got a lot of pressure. There's a lot of excitement and adrenaline, and you just have to tune it out and just do your thing okay yeah i yeah, don't see the mess you know you, you know that they're there but you you gotta just think of them as regular people that's what they are i think you know but um yeah yeah don't don't make it too big in your own head really <laughs> i like to just hide the view account as well sometimes right i just i i try not to pay too much attention to it i like to have chat open just so i can see when people call me stupid and uh, <laughs> when i made a mistake because that's how I learn as well myself. Um, but yeah, the, the few accounts I usually try to just mask and just out of my head, just just have fun. Yeah. Um, what are, in your opinion, the most important skills to have when you want to cast? Important skill? Uh, just be comfortable. Just, yeah, I think that is one of the most important skills. Just be comfortable and um, yeah, enjoy enjoy the stuff that you're doing. I think being clear and uh, articulate is important, especially in uh, fast moments. You don't need so many words to uh, describe what's happening on the screen. It's just being very clear and quick uh, to describe a situation and not let too many words get in your way. Okay. Uh, if imagine on the uh, stream right now there is someone who wants to become a caster, what would be your one advice to him? You gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. If you want, if this is what you want to do, be ready for waking up early hours, putting in a lot of hours overall as well. Just not only you know. Uh, casting yourself but you you will need to still watch the other games as well you this like yeah this is um getting yourself out there i mean if you're just getting started honestly what i would say just try to find some games try to find some replays packs or something like that go cast those see if it's something you enjoy doing um just try it out with some smaller teams especially right that that's just just check out if it is something you want to be doing and if it really is if it's something that you would uh, really want to dig deep into, then you know what you, you go for it. But um, yeah, try try to try to be smart about it with how you how you kind of approach it in a sense. Um, because yeah, it, it can still be a little bit of a, a difficult market, right? To to really get yourself um, 
in a financial stable position. If that makes sense. But yeah, maybe I'm going too deep into it already. But yeah, that that is my take on it. Okay. I think networking is important. Just uh, realizing that you can put in a lot of time and effort into something, but having somebody to be able to bounce ideas off of, give you feedback, help you grow is so important. And I would say that's a large part of like the, any of the su success that I've seen personally has been like working with someone like Kozan who um, has a, a good insight as to things that are going well for him. Things he's like, hey, you're, you're doing this well. Here's where you can improve this. Um, being a part of a team, like even just being a part of Alpha X and having an opportunity to get to cast is important as well. So, um, so that networking component and then also just being ready to learn. There's going to be things that you don't do well. There's going to be things that you can improve upon and not taking that too personally as you work to grow is really important. And what are your ways, guys, to improve? Do you just watch the casters or... I would say I watch a lot of uh, very successful casters. Finding those people that you that you enjoy and uh, looking at what they do. Um, I think some of the casters actually do a really good job, like Zombie Grub on her stream before she casted uh, for I Am Katowice. Uh, went through a whole stream where she just looked up matchups and found information on uh, different people that she knew was going to be at the event and started making just a catalog list of information she needed to know. And I thought that was a really cool uh, deep dive into what she does specifically to, to prepare. So uh, finding somebody that you really admire and look at what they do that makes them successful. Okay. Um, what's the little things that make you uh, different than other casters? What what make you unique as a caster? Just the, the sheer volume of bullshittery that is being <laughs> <laughs> spewed. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I mean I don't know. It. Uh, I think everybody has their unique flavor, and it. it, it, it yeah. Um, I find it very hard to to kind of say that is something I do specifically. I I wouldn't be able to to say myself honestly. Can you um, tell for Rushies then? What make him unique, cousin? Uh, Rushi, very just overall energetic kind of atmosphere. He's always having fun, always just, you know, being a very nice, open guy. Um, that's the type of atmosphere. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's some other players or other casters out there as well, but I, I think Rushi does that to, to an extent better than... Uh, well, I, I don't know. It feels more real for me, at least, with Rushi. I don't know. <laughs> But yeah. Oh, Rishi. Um. Well, I think something that I've always really enjoyed about Kozan is how level-headed he is. Like there would be, I, I remember very specifically moments, uh, just even in between games where we would. Uh, I, I think like the Sarah Mara was like, oh my god, did you see that the Thanius Roddy's here? And he's like, no, no, Rushy, you just gotta, you just gotta <laughs> do your thing, and just very even keel. Um, does a good job of like staying grounded. Um, I've always seen him as very analytical and able to tear apart a um, like a matchup or a person and uh, being able to provide some more insight as to what they're bringing to that matchup or even just, yeah, you know, when they play uh, a specific type of play style, they seem to do really well, but uh, their opponent today is not going to kind of feed into that. And I'll be curious to see how that kind of unfolds. And I've always admired his ability to be able to um, tear apart a matchup or tear apart a player to bring some more detail to um, what we're about to watch in that particular game. And he's been able to do that with not only a lot of different players, but a lot of different matchups as well. Okay. Uh, well, guys, I think this is it for my question for the casting. So we have to move to uh, what everyone is waiting for. Uh, the show match, of course. So, how are you guys? Are you feeling about this? Feeling? Yeah. For the match? Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, I spent a good three games on ladder this month. I think I'm ready for this. <laughs> Let's do it. And Rashi, I saw, I saw you stream a lot, so you should be ready, right? Uh, you, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a little tired today, but, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have some fun. 
Okay. Uh, can you guys join on EU maybe? Because if I switch server, my computer will just die and I'm already on EU. <laughs> will do. Amazing. And I mean, uh, uh, what's your MMR? Because I'm not really sure. Rushi, you're like Diamond Run? Right? Uh, my MMR is right now around 4,300. Okay. And what about you, Cousin? Um, well, I was when I was playing those three matches, I got the odds into 4.1. Okay. 4.1 range. But that is EU, so clearly. <laughs> well, well, well. Okay, well, I let you join, guys. I don't even set up. I didn't set up any single MG. Uh, let's let's take care of this. Perfect. And let's invite you, of course, to the crew. Oh, you already made a party amazing. Uh, we're going to play in an old map because, well, why play a ladder map when you can't play an old ladder map? Let's play on Abyssal Reef. Oh, it's such a good map. I love it. It it's is been right. a long time. Okay, let me give me five seconds because I just remember I did not set up your camera to have it on your on this scene. Um, oops. Poof. Are you gonna play Terran or Zerg there, Kozan? Oh yeah, good question. Terran. Ooh. TPC, come on, we we, we got to do it, right? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Let's make it happen. Um, why does it not appear? Can't proxy two wrecks when I'm playing Zerg, Rushi. Come on. No. Now. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, let me just uh, two seconds add your camera, of course. Uh, amazing. Poof. <laughs> and the second camera, uh, with the capture, and of oh, course, well, I. Let's just jump into, into the game. And I'm setting this up. <laughs> oh, this is good. So, I, I mean, are you going to cast this? Do we need to. No, be deafened? Yeah, I guess let's stay in force chat. I don't know what you're saying about this. But... This is this is how the World War One, uh, you know, w soldiers felt. You know, considering, do I shoot myself in the foot now to get out of this mess? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see a hammer there, and I know my hand. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. So, what do you think of RB Salary? Did you like this map? I loved it. It was like for a year on the map pool. It was uh, a map I love because I started playing StarCraft 2 at this time when Abyssal Reef was there. Do you remember this map? Hell yeah. Used to be uh, a big one, right? I, I remember a lot of... Uh, I, I think this map in particular, a lot of dicks were drawn onto by In Control when he was trying to <laughs> analyze it overall. But yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult for me to, to actually get this all backwards here. So this is the best of one. So the one who wins this map, win the match, and of course the second trophy. And if it's rushes, that means he would have won the two trophies today. And it would be really a shame for the Dutch player. So a big of stress, a lot of stress for Kozan. Uh, but why is there so many STV crossing the map for uh, Kozan? Is he trying to make a <laughs> nine racks reaper the famous build? That's right. That's right. Oh, don't do that to me. Yeah, no, he's not. He's just making a proxy PC, you know. Where it's standard Oh, yeah, team. okay, easy peasy. That's all. That's all. I mean, Where I just want to make it clear as well. Thing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface all of this by saying I have 116 ping. Oh, already making excuses. I yeah. see. I see. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just bringing clarity hmm. to all. the matchup here. Let's like see. when Maru and Sarah have to play each other, uh, they're playing on e on US West, and and like that's important to know. Yeah, it's. I think it's really hard. I heard Clem complaining a lot about this this year. Each time he's losing on uh, and on, on uh, against Korea, and he's like, yeah, but it's US West, and I mean, sure, it's really complicated to play to play with uh, uh, 180 pings. Uh, well, I have uh, myself 180 pings on NA West, but I mean. That's the issue with um with online event. Yes. Okay, so let's I'm, see what... I'm I'm gonna stop losing losing the ability to talk here, Miguel. Yeah, no problem. Unless if you want me to just focus on the talking. <laughs> I try to do that more so. No, you you, but... you 
I I'm just going to uh, annoy Rushy now. Hello, Rushy, how are you doing? Can you talk a little bit about um, the Junior Championship? How was it on Saturday? <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay, so it was good stuff. Um, we had uh, some really nice uh, matchups here. Optimistic and Cuckoo went back and forth. They had uh, met twice in the same series, and it, it was just great. They were very well matched. Optimistic, though, squeaked out both series though and it, it was not very clear that it was going to happen in both but it went really well i was really excited amazing okay well let's see at cause and build this is really weird um no it's not it's perfect Shit. i'm really wondering the what he's going to do with so much gas to be honest but we'll see perfect it's all going according to plan Oh, Cuckoo is on the chat. Cuckoo is on the chat. Hello, Cuckoo. Uh, Cuckoo, we're playing, right, Reggie? Oh, absolutely. Um, devastated for Cuckoo. Um, we need... Well, actually, I actually kind of am. Because I, I definitely... Uh, like, happy for optimistic, don't get me wrong. But definitely want more uh, <laughs> Terran representation and less Protoss representation moving forward. So... So as you see, Rashi is right. making his lair. And if you upgrade the lair, you have a, an hive. And do you guys know something specific about the hive compared to other buildings in StarCraft 2? Where the hell do I build this? Um, that so it has the most work. hit points? Exactly! <laughs> Amazing. Rashi uh, again winning <laughs> this question <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> I'm not sure where to make this. I'm not... What's happening, guys? What, what we... <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an hard wall on uh, Abyssal Reef, as you can see there. <laughs> Pretty hard wall, of course. So yeah, I'm, t I'm trying to pause a little bit Froshy because he's favored. He's playing so much at the moment. We see him stream a lot. It's oh, but fighting the the ping here. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. I just know that there's gonna be uh, Marines showing up here soon as well. No, it's not. Don't you tell me you're watching a stream. No. How else could you know I'm making Marines? I mean, I scouted them. No, <laughs> did. Yeah. What did you murder my overlord with? Uh... Uh... And that's the difference that's with, uh, that's the difference with- uh... I was very actually peace and telling you. Oh <laughs> man. For example, I got, Kozan, I got some if, with me here today. If Kozan says, I know you're going Utah, that means he's stream hacking, or oh, this means someone told him, but that's different. He did not put the, the, the Spire on your second base, Rashi, uh, but he should be prepared <laughs> because it's about to get finished, of course. <laughs> Um, geez, this is this is good. I like the idea of having at the end of the of a big talk, a serious talk, of course, having a little show match in StarCraft 2, and all the Marines dying. That's tough for Kozan, but he did scoot the spire, and that's great because if he had not scooted it, he could not have known there is a spire, and that would have been an issue, of course. Rush is so late on his third base, uh, not even finished at five minutes and forty seconds. Oh, that's rough, Rushy. What am I shooting? What was that? <laughs> a little overlord being annoying and forcing Kozan to come with his marines to kill his overlord. And the oh, first mutas, rough. of course, being made. Not that much mutas for now, Rashi. <laughs> I imagine this is what pro players do and like they just start singing with the right that's what they do right they just one of them at least, yeah. not screaming the the theme song of oh come on just let me land that thing fuck did you hear reno's uh playlist by the way guys i what? did i enjoyed it really i found it terrible <laughs> i was so disappointed <laughs> Oh crap, that's a lot of Zerglings, the Marines over Steam, then there is no Manivac in Kozan composition, I don't want to be mean, but there is a flaw on his build order there. No Manivac already, and the first Mutas, and the, the Missile turret was not finished, and this is what, a terrible... What, 
A catastrophe! The turret goes down and six S7 has died. This is a catastrophe for the Tehran player no, it's here. Okay. It's okay, don't worry about it. You're overselling it here, Miguel. It's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. And, and of course... Don't you worry about it. So I have a question. Why Russia are you making roaches now? He likes roaches? I don't know. Well, for now, there is Muta. The first Muta is going down. A big mistake from Rushi losing this Muta. Oh my god, this GM player having some pings, and this is a terrible thing. <laughs> I don't mean to be mean. <laughs> Incredibly mean. And now we have Kozan. No, I think you're not being mean enough, honestly. Was... Okay, Kozan crossing the map with a lot of armies. There is nothing for Rushi. Can he really defend with Muta and Rushi against so many Marines? Crossing the maps, oh, happily he could sit with an Overseer, else he could not have known it. And I would have had to tell him, which I did not. Few Roaches, but can really Roach deal with plus one a uh, shield and steam Marines? I don't think so. And this is it. This will be the GG and the uh, American player here showing again that EU is better than NA. This is it, GG Kozan taking map number one and only map in this best of one. <laughs> Marines! Amazing, that was, that was, that you was a good game. coming, Rushi, you knew it, you were calling it out. You I knew mean... that my Marines coming. I'm gonna be real honest, didn't realize that our... Uh... Our uh, builds were going to be telegraphed to each other because <laughs> that is my whole strategy. Honestly, honestly, I didn't. I, I, I thought he was lying about the mutilisk and the roaches as well. And, <laughs> I thought he was lying. And well, because then I'm... my marines ran in and I saw the spire, and then well, I I knew that that is all right. Uh. And while while Kozan wins the game, Rush is, is trying to find good excuses for losing this match, but he <laughs> does not have, and again, EU better than NA, that's a definitive proof. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you, you won the quiz, I won, I won this one. Exactly. Sure. You know, we, you, you're smarter, and I'm clearly better at stuff. <laughs> <you guys. laughs> well, 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 we'll go with that. Sure, sure. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess it's time to make a conclusion. Do you have projects, a current or future project you want to advertise right now? Who? Me? You? Yeah, yeah. Cause I'm, let's go. You want? So you, me? you go first. Um... Well, right now I am trying to work on some uh, some illustrations to put them on the web shop. Um, yeah, um, I, I, it's just some simple designs, some some small things, but um, yeah, some illustrations, that type of stuff. Still needs a lot of work, so probably, I mean, it might take a little bit before anything really is online, especially because I'm kind of working out some kinks with production. But um, yeah, I, I hope that is something I'm going to be able to bring on uh, on the internet pretty soon, and uh, more stuff. More StarCraft 2, always coming up. Okay, amazing. Well. Specific events you're looking forward to, Kazan? The events, oh man, I would love it if that was a home story cop somewhere in Germany again, and I would just I would just go over there and just have a good time. Yeah, that would be cool. I might go That's to all this I want. Or, well. or some sort of Korean events, right? I would love to go to Korea and cast there. If that were ever to happen, that would be amazing. Okay, so Rashi, current or future projects? Uh, just uh, continuing to work on the, the junior championships that takes place every Saturday over on my stream. So uh, excited for season two. Uh, some new faces uh, getting in on the scene as well as our old returning ones. But uh, A-Rock Fire, season one winner, looking to try and defend his title as he goes into season two. Okay, great. And uh, same question, specific events you're looking forward to see? Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat as uh, Kozan. I'm I'm really looking forward to hopefully uh, Home Story Cup. Uh, Dennis has been teasing uh, some upgrades to his facility. And what I hope that maybe translates into is a, a Home Story Cup that comes a little bit sooner. But we'll just have to see. Um, I'm ready to travel, honestly. Uh, if there is an offline event that I can feasibly get to, I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm going to try and go because uh, we 
are in desperate need of some exciting offline events in StarCraft 2, and I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So, well, this is it, I guess. What's your social network, question on Twitter and Twitch? Right? Uh, people can find me on Twitch and Twitter uh, at Rushy SC. Uh, I post a lot of band content on my Twitter account, but uh, always share my um, Twitch findings as well. Doing a lot of ladder, doing a lot of casting on Saturdays, just having a lot of fun in general. And because on Twitch, Trovo and Twitter, right? Yeah. Uh... It is really cozy on Twitch and Twitter. Um, kind of as in that is just really the best I came up with. And um, yeah, then Kozen on Trovo, just Kozen. Okay, amazing. Uh, do you, well, I will let you guys uh, finish with the last word each before we stop this uh, cast. Uh, well, not this cast, this uh, show, but it was really nice. I loved it. And I uh, hope you loved it too, but I let you guys uh, conclude, each of you, with a final word. All right. Well, Miguel, thank you for uh, for letting us do the experiments. Yes, yeah, the first guest on the show. That is, that, honestly, when you asked, uh, I was very excited. I thought it would be uh, a lot of joy, uh, fun, and you know what? It was. Um, so, yeah, much appreciated, man, for doing this stuff, setting this type of stuff up. I always appreciate just more... Um, you know, community stuff going around StarCraft 2 rather than just pure StarCraft 2 and having it been mixed in with some other stuff, right? Like as you're doing with real life and stuff, getting to know the individuals in StarCraft 2. Um, good stuff, Miguel. I hope I hope it keeps going. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope you get a lot of really great guests. Um, you know, the the big boys that uh, that will be coming later in for you, hopefully, right? Yeah, Rashi. Um, yeah, just big shout out to you. You've done so much great work uh, inside of Alpha X. And uh, this is Alpha X trying to fill gaps. I mean, that's been kind of our big thing since we've started all the way back in 2018. Uh, it was just creating uh, opportunities and experiences in the StarCraft II community that were not presently there. So coming up with our own premiere event, um, a great event for uh, kids that aren't able to participate in some of the EPT events, and just uh, lots of great community uh, opportunities. So a uh, big shout out to Alpha X for giving us the chance to be a part of their platform and uh, trusting us with uh, amazing opportunities like the King of Battles. And Miguel, uh, for you trusting us to be a part of your inaugural episode, hopefully of many here on the Alpaca Talk Show. Yeah, actually, it was really fun. I didn't expect three hours, so I'm a bit sorry for you guys. I hope it was not too long. And next week, <laughs> next Friday, at 7 p.m. CST, 1 p.m. EDT, we will be receiving two of the latest editions of uh, Alpha X uh, team, as uh, two Terran players from Europe, Aquaron and Battleby. And it's going to be great, I think. So be there. And again, thanks a lot, Rushi and Kozan. And uh, see you soon in your next cast and stream for Rushi too. Thank See you. you guys. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>